Okay, well, hello everybody. Hopefully everybody's having a very good day. Today is March 30th, 2019. Um, currently 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. And welcome everybody to uh, SIMH Raw and Uncensored. I am your host, uh, Zach Blimp Sturk, team leader and co-founder of the Southern Illinois Monster Hunters team. Um, everybody, um, just uh, thank you for your patience and everything. Um, while I am waiting on the rest of my uh, guests uh, on the panel to uh, jump on, uh, just for the last three months, uh, whenever we was last time we was doing a Geek Squatch installment, um, we uh, we got reported for copyright infringement. <laughs> And so uh, they went and uh, they uh, slapped me on the wrist and they restricted me from doing a live stream for the uh, first three months. But we are back. We are stronger than ever. And, uh, I mean, this is probably one of the best birthday presents a man could get, you know. Um, i tell you guys what. You guys uh, just hang loose for a second. Um, if you guys would, please, I'm sitting here. Uh, Let's see, uh, Ice Wolf, Jim Jerkins, Bobcat Wong, if you would please, very, I ask you guys, please share this uh, live stream on your timelines, um, in your groups. Um, let's get some good viewers on here, you know. I see I already got eight people watching. Hello, everybody. Hope everybody's having a good night. Just let me go and uh, get, um, get this all uh, squared away, and I will be right with you guys. Well, no wonder I had my mic shut off. It was showing that I had sound in there, but okay. Um, so let me go ahead and, and uh, restart. Daniel Benoit will be joining me here uh, very soon. So we'll, hopefully we'll be having a little bit of a good discussion tonight. I send it out to uh, the speakers for the SIMH Bigfoot Conference. <laughs> Um, the ECBRO conference, some other little groups I'm in. So, um, a couple of other announcements, like I was saying, 
um, the, the Mysteries of Southern Illinois Lecture Series, um, hosted by the Southern Illinois Monster Hunters. Yours truly will be speaking at these lectures. Um, so far, I am scheduled from April 12th to August 9th of this year, just in Southern Illinois speaking. Uh, I'll be doing one lecture a month. Um, all these local libraries, big, I'm not talking little small town libraries. I'm talking community centers. I'm talking, uh, big, uh, Carnegie libraries, Met metropolitan, there it goes, metropolitan libraries and, and, uh, big towns and cities, uh, hosting these, um, these, um, little, uh, town halls. I will have a map set up. Um, for anybody that has had a sighting, um, if you come out to one of my lectures, if you've had an, what you believe to be an encounter with Bigfoot, Dogman, a UFO, uh, paranormal, uh, you're more than welcome to go and put a pin up on our map marking uh, what you saw. Um, all my lectures are free to the public. I am not charging one cent for anybody to come in. Um, man, there's just so much going on, man. Uh, I know one thing, this is going to be one of my most busiest years, uh, since I started doing, uh, speaking and, um, one of the busiest months out of this year for me is, you know, it's going to be, have to, it's gotta be, um, the month of June. I'm going to be on the road twice in June. I got a big lecture to do, um, before the uh, a bunch of professors from Southern Illinois University that's coming to this um, the lecture from for Carbondale uh, Metropolitan Library. So it's it's going to be very very uh, wild to say the least. Um, <clears throat> like I said, it's free to the public. I'm going to be going over the cryptids that and ha that call Southern Illinois home. Um, a little bit of the history of um, the county I live in, Bloody Williamson, and some other stuff. And then, um, <clears throat> let's see, May 3rd and May 4th, I will be in Harlan, Kentucky for the Wild Pine Mountain Conference. Um, I will be speaking alongside of uh, uh, Tony Filosi, Matt uh, uh, Delft, uh, Mike Miller, Mike Feltner, of the Ohio Night Stalkers, Tony Filosi, uh, Dr. John Stamey, uh, some people that I have had uh, paths with um, and uh, been alongside with and uh, uh, been friends with in the past. Um, Judith Hensley, the uh, author of Appalachian Big Cats, um, she will be there. It's going to be very fun. Um, I will be doing a lecture on Mysteries of Kentucky. And then June 8th, I will be back in Harlan, Kentucky for the Harlan County Cryptid Con, um, hosted by uh, Jimmy Blanton. It's the um, second year that he's done this. Last year was a huge success, had a big turnout for such a free event and such short notice. Um, this year, I mean, he's got it stacked to the rafters whenever it comes to credible researchers. <laughs> Uh, he's got people like Michael Cook, Matt Delf is going to be back, Daniel Benoit um, will be there, um, along with a couple of others. And I'm really looking forward to doing this. I'm going down there. I'm not going to be speaking at this event. I'll just put that out there. Um, I will be managing the table with my brother and my best friend, Daniel Benoit, uh, co-founder uh, and team leader and founder of the ECBRO. East Coast Bigfoot Researchers Organization. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm having a hard time getting my words. I've got bad speech therapy. But uh, uh, let's see what else have we got going on. And then I come home, do the lecture in Carbondale for the um, uh, for the before the professors of Southern Illinois University. And then I go and speak of the devil. He's here. And then on June 28th and the 29th, I head for Virginia for the ECBRO Virginia Bigfoot Conference, hosted by none other than the man, the myth, the legend, 
my co-host, Mr. Daniel J. Benoit. How you doing, Dan? I'm doing quite well. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm What's doing up, good, man? Bubba. Yeah, sorry I'm a little late. I was, like I said, I was just finishing up um, the premiere on my YouTube channel and yeah. answering, answering questions with other people. So, <laughs> oh, That's good. You're yeah. fine. But what uh, did you do to your profile picture, dude? You look like a little child. No, see, my this is my old this is um I have two YouTube channels. This is my old YouTube channel. But every time for some reason when I get joined on somebody else's, it always pops up my old uh my old YouTube channel uh, profile. But now if I do the thing, it shows up mine. I don't know. So <laughs> but this one here is uh, actually if you if you look it up, it's actually under my name. So yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, man, he changed his profile overnight. He looked like a little child. <laughs> nah, I know I need to get on that one and change it. I haven't messed with that one in a long time. So, yeah. Oh, boy. So, what's new, dude? I mean, this is our first time back on uh, SIMH uh, in three months. We've had a lot happen in the last three months, man. Oh, I don't know where to begin. Um, <laughs> oh, cool! I see. Well, first of all, before I say that, I see we got uh, Jeff Kennedy, Bobcat Wong, and Jim Jerkins found their way over here, so that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know. Um, been busy pretty much lately, and uh, you know, as you saw earlier, I you know, I get out there in the woods every chance I get. Uh, I'm definitely looking forward to it. Tomorrow's going to be a little cooler in temperature, but it's still supposed to be nice. And uh, I know it's supposed to cool off more towards the evening progresses tomorrow, but I definitely plan on getting back out in the woods again tomorrow. And uh, not sure of the location I'm going to go tomorrow. It, cause the Where I was today in my area, um, after getting out of the woods, I was trying to find a spot to play around and fish a little bit, but the lake was crowded and all the good spots on the river were taken. So, I had to go further up on the river to find somewhere to play around. I only took a few casts. Um, didn't really put much time into fishing there, but um, later on I will once I get more situated. So, um, you know, what? one thing I will say as far as getting out there in the woods, you know, not just today, but over the last few weeks I've been getting out there. There, you know, because we have been getting a lot warmer temperatures. Spring is finally here, and I am definitely finding and come across. All kinds of tracks. Now, I mean, of course, all the name, all the known wildlife. Bears have been on the move for a while. Tons of deer. You know, of course, deer are everywhere. But um, now I am coming across squash tracks, which you know I, I will bluntly call them squash tracks. I'm, I'm convinced they are squash tracks. Now I don't see them being anything else. Um, most of the tracks I'm finding right now are fairly small. Uh, I like, for example, for what I found today, we're averaging around 12 inches. And um, I have found a few, give or take, in, in the past few weeks. Maybe a couple that were a little bit bigger, but most of them are averaging around 12 inches. So, um, nice. Yeah, but well, yeah, before uh, before you go on, I want to welcome on here uh, the man, the man behind Bigfoot Odyssey, Mister Kerry Arnold, has joined us tonight. How you doing, Kerry? Oh, let me come. Oh, there he is. <laughs> What's up, Kerry? Huh? <laughs> yeah, see, I was on the other page you looking at the... Uh... Yeah, I hear you. I got terrible internet out here. I probably won't be able to stay on too long. But I appreciate <laughs> you having me, for sure. Well, I know. I haven't spoke to you in a while. Uh, Zach, if you don't mind, I'm not trying to take over the show. I was going to... I just wanted to ask uh, Kerry on uh, what is his... Uh, you know, what, what's he been up to lately? I've been at work, man. I've been out here in the desert for a month. So why y'all haven't heard much from me? I don't have any internet here. I kind of uh, finagle. I got my truck running right now with the booster going at a hot spot so I can be in my camper where it's warm. It's freaking freezing out here. Hmm. I see that or I have to get in my truck and drive up the road where I have a decent signal. So, yeah. It's kind of been pretty peaceful, actually. Nice. Yeah, I know how it is. There was a while I actually, you know, stepped back, you know, I mean, I still get on the, I still got on, you know, Facebook and stuff, but 
I, I kind of slimmed down a little bit. I kind of backed off a little bit, you know, to kind of more or less gather my own self, you know, gather my own thoughts and, you know, you know, kind of, yeah, like you said, you know, it was peaceful. So that's pretty much how I needed it. <laughs> it, it was unintentional. You know, whenever I go down the road, my messenger goes off 20 times and I got 45 texts that come in from, from my message. So it's, uh, <laughs> I eventually have to get all, get it all to it, get to it all, you know? <sighs> Oh, yeah. Oh. No, we was talking about fishing before you jumped on. I know one thing. I'm ready to get back out there and start ripping some lips and hauling in some hogs, man. <laughs> no doubt. Yeah. You kind of broke up a little bit, Zach. What were you talking about? I, I was talking about fishing. I'm ready to go and rip lips and haul hogs. Yeah, um, back earlier this uh, back earlier this month, I was at a concert with uh, my old baseball coach, and he was talking about uh, how he got a fifty dollar pole at Rural King. It's a local uh, farm store, and uh, he said it's got uh, tips on it that glow in the dark. And I, he said, "Ain't that cool?" And I said, "Yeah." And I said, "But it doesn't matter if they glow in the dark or not. You got to be able to catch them first, old man." Yeah. No doubt. Because <laughs> see, well, you see, because every, for the last for the last two years, every time we've gone out fishing, I've outfished him. <laughs> you know, so I don't do that, right? Hey, he 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 keeps bringing me back out there because I'm the only person stupid enough to go fishing with him. Yeah, but I didn't. I didn't get to put I'll in a lot it. of time fishing today, though. Now I would have liked to, but uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll maybe I'll manage to do something tomorrow. It depends on where I go out. Because I mean, I, I want to spend more time on the woods, but you know, but I want to go somewhere where it's close to where I can fish too. So, so we'll see. Well, my brother was fishing. supposed to join us tonight, but he's out fishing right now. Ah, what's the temperature it's like over Sunday. there? Oh yeah. God! Let me check here real quick. Because I mean, we, I got the windows open right now over here. We got a nice cross breeze going through the from the kitchen over through the living room, and I'm, you know, of course, I'm sitting in my bedroom because that's where my computer and the desk is. I got my window open, the fan going. So right now in Atella, Illinois, 38 degrees. Oh wow! You guys got cool temperatures there. It has been. Yeah, I know it's rained for the past uh, few days. What's that? It's about 45 here, but it's a 30, 40 mile an hour wind constantly. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's been in the 70s here today. Uh, it still feels like it's in the upper 60s. It still feels warm out right now. But now come uh, tomorrow, yeah, it's supposed to – it's going to be in the 60s, but it's going to drop down and get cool, I think, tomorrow in the evening. So – uh, but while we got Kerry on here, because he said he wasn't going to be on here very long, what's to do with you, uh, Kerry, with your research? What's what's going on? Well, you know, we've got uh, we've got Nebraska coming up. Uh, I'll be leaving here to go home on April the twenty fifth. I'll be home for three weeks. In that time, we're going to be going to Nebraska. May second, we'll be there for four days with the Omaha Indians. Uh, Red, red spot, and we're gonna get it's gonna be a two show because we're gonna they, they invited us up to their uh their annual celebration, but they also have a research team been researching for 10 years and you know they don't have a YouTube channel, so they've got a mountain of evidence that nobody's ever seen. Plus, I mean, it's the Omaha Indians, they've got all the culture, uh, they call it Satonga which pretty much means Bigfoot, same thing. But that's just what they call it, say Tonga. Uh, all kinds of good stuff going on there. We're going to try to catch Eddie in the woods and do a documentary on her on the way back. So that's all planned. We still got Sisters in the Moon, uh, Sisters of the Moon to do in uh, East Texas. I uh, got a camping trip planned with d Dolls and uh, Tex. They're going to take me out and get me over my my fear of Bigfoot. 
sometime. And all in that three-week period, I'm hoping. So we got a lot coming up. I'm never off, ever. It's not like you're a busy man, bro. Constantly. Uh, I got to go to work. I got to come to work to get a break. Oh. So, uh, yeah, well, that's, I mean, I'm gonna, I wish you the best in your safe travels and everything, dude. Uh, whenever, because, uh, going to, uh, Nebraska, that's a long haul, especially. I know, like, from here to my place, that's about a seven, about almost a 700 mile haul. Yeah, it's a little farther than that from where we are. It's going to be about 15 hour drive, probably a thousand miles. Oh, wow. Nothing to couple travelers. Don't even know. We got a diesel. We knew we were going to put a bunch of miles on it. <laughs> well, I wish you the best of luck, my friend. Be sure to keep us updated, especially. Oh, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Will do. Will do. I am. Uh, so, I appreciate y'all having me on. I didn't know this. Is, uh, we're on your channel, right? Oh, oh. Yeah, you're you're on the Southern Illinois Monster Hunters channel. Okay. Yeah, that's why I'm trying to be quiet because I have the habit. If I get to talking, I I, I don't want to. I have a tendency to sound like I'm taking over, and I don't want to be that way. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't know what I didn't know what the nice topic was going to be, and uh, you know I was I was on D last night because I, you know I get to watching people, and you know different. I'm not going to say who I was watching, but it's the experts, man. They just they, it bothers me a lot, and and I get to thinking about what it's going to take and what we're all going to have to do. To actually get something done, I mean, it just it's, it, to me, it's combating the division of the big to the book in your community. Yeah. And in my mind, in my mind, it starts with bias. You know, being biased isn't always a bad thing, and it doesn't make you irrational. You know, you can have bias that's completely rational. It's called rational discernment. You have to be able to discern rationally between things that are harmful and, and are beneficial. Right. You know, we have, we have things built into our brain, functions to give us the ideas about what's harmful or not. And one of those things is familiar, familiarity. You know, if you're familiar with something, you have a, a better understanding of it and you know how safe it is. So if you're unfamiliar with something, you know, you have no how you don't have no how careful you need to be. You know, so our normal default setting as as humans is to be careful. So what ends up happening, I think, a lot of times is that this bias creates egos. Egos start to grow and they need to be fed. And then what happens? You know, people start making things up seem more relevant and knowledgeable than they actually are. Right. You know, because because of the power of that reverence has a hold of them and they don't even realize they're doing it. You know, and on the, on the other side of that, you have those that are trying to attain that power, you know, so they become, excuse me, I just ate. So they become disingenuous and start making things up to get that reverence. You know, both of those to me are dangerous because you got all these people that are familiar with you, trust you, and may take every word as gospel that you say. So they, so then they put into practice your made-up ideas, and then things go terribly wrong, and then someone gets hurt or killed, you know? So, yeah. you know, the, the majority of safety rules in the oil field are written in blood, which means somebody had to die for them to realize, you know, certain things <clears throat> were not a good idea. You know, we don't want that to be the reason we start taking each other in the Bigfoot community. You know, so how do we combat this? How do we keep ourselves from falling into that hole? <clears throat> now, it doesn't matter what it is. Sports, school, your job, Bigfoot community. <clears throat> it's just the way we're wired as humans. You know, as, <clears throat> as soon as something with value and merit, and we're all doing it collectively, there's going to be a hierarchy. 
And that hierarchy can get corrupted. It stops rewarding competence. It starts rewarding power. Yeah. And there's, there's, there's always that danger of the hierarchy becoming corrupted, which I think it has. You know, some people are better at, better at it than others. That's just the way it is. And, you know, and that produces a lot of dispossessed people at the bottom. That's why it's on the ones who are better at it, probably like you guys, and, and more respected and revered to lift up those that aren't, you know, and the only way to combat division is to keep us humble and is to keep us humble enough and not to fall into that expert mindset. I get right. it. You have to believe in the message. You got to believe in the message, the ones you're promoting or, uh, you know, it can force a bad perception and now you're, you've lost your credibility. Yeah. But I, I do believe this, this, uh, this corruption obviously has already happened. And, I mean, if we're going to change the complexion of the community, then we're going to have to start asking the questions that, that, that curtail those experts from trying to sound more expert than they actually are. You know, how do you know that? What series of events occurred that led you to that? You know, it, it's not that tall of order in my mind. Yeah. But, yeah, some of these experts don't dare ask them where they got their information from. <laughs> we got we to gotta do it, man. We oh, gotta yeah. do it. Yeah, the thing so is, I, you know, I've been there. I've been on that complacency side. Yeah, I didn't. I really wasn't really paying attention. I was just taking everything they had to say as fact, you know. Right. So I, didn't mean to take over, I didn't mean to take over the show. Oh no, 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 <laughs> no, definitely not. Like it says, it's raw and uncensored. There is no safe zone. Whenever you're on this show, you can say whatever <laughs> you want. <laughs> I don't. Man. That's the thing. That's that's. The on my channel i don't cut corners i don't tell bullshit i go and i say I, it how it is and i leave it that way well i came across this thing it's called the dunning kruger effect and essentially what it is is people think they know more about something than they actually do they just don't realize it it comes down to it's that you start earning people's trust and they start and you, you just want to seem like you know what you're talking about. They don't even realize they're doing it. That's that. And, but there's an actual name for it is that the Dunning Kruger effect. And uh, I actually came across that looking it up and I thought about how, what it's going to take for us to, uh, to get the community to come together, you know, change the complexion of things. And it all comes down to, you know, the guys that are, up higher end, up at the higher end of the hierarchy, uh, try helping the ones that are that are you know just coming in, just coming up. Yeah, uh, I'm not saying I'm up there at the top. You know, we're probably closer to the bottom than the top of some of these guys. But everybody needs to just help everybody, because like I said, not everybody's the same. Some people are a lot better at this than others. It's just the way it is. That's in any, anything. Just the way it works out. Yeah, yeah, because I know in some cases, like for example, I mean, when I when I backed off of, uh, you know, like I said, I what was uh, like a week last week. Yeah, just for the weekend. I mean, I, I kind of backed off of Facebook for a little while, and you know, did my thing, you know, and I did, you know, I can use a little post. I did a couple things, but uh, but the thing is, when I got back on all the way to start really checking into things. I mean, I wasn't even on social media, and and, and you know, the, come to find out, there was drama still going on, and then and names being called out, fingers being pointed, and I was like, hold up, where is all this coming from? You know, and the you know thing is, even though, like for example, I'll throw this out there, I I, I thought I made peace with somebody, and you know, I thought everything was cool, you know, and try to make a truce, but you know, they clearly said they didn't want a truce, and then. What what? But they yet they didn't want a full truth. But yet they were willing to leave it alone. But yet, when the videos kept being played, your name just you, you still get being brought. You know, my name was kept getting being brought up, and and about this and that. And then, then one thing I I was very observant about. It wasn't the main source. It was the sources that uh, it, it was his influences, uh, the followers that was feeding it. You know, and that's one thing I noticed. That, People are feeding yeah, this, and exactly uh, what I'm yeah, talking about. yeah, and then and here's another thing. I was messaged by a certain somebody, 
And you know, and th this is what don't this is what gets me. This person said, "Well, yeah, I'm the one. I was one of the ones that was trying to create peace, blah blah." But but the very same person, you know, I've been more from more than one person. I had multiple screenshots. This person talking trash to the other person about me. I said, "What a hypocrite!" You know, the some people live off Daniel. Some people live off drama. I'm telling you, the best thing to do ignore them. Yeah. Ignore them, and they they expose themselves every time. Because I mean, yep. if they get a reaction out of you, all it does is make you look like an a hole. You know? Yeah. So you know, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, I I basically you know try my best to you know. In some cases, I've actually laughed it off because some of the stuff is really ridiculous, you know. And um, smart people yeah. know that. So you know, it's crazy. <laughs> but uh, so yeah, sometimes it seems like it's an ongoing thing. But then you know, and oh, another thing we we talked about on our podcast last night, and, and uh, you know, and, and Nikki, poor Nikki, bless her heart, because she keeps getting blamed for things, and. And the one thing she made a point about is like, you know, we like to joke around. And there was a time where, like, for example, me and Zach, we, we cut up on each other all the time. But there was other, <laughs> you know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we like to joke about other people too. Then, you know, it's like, then it, things get thrown out of proportion and things get really ugly. And, um, and then and trouble starts that way. And it's pretty sad how you can't have a simple joke without offending anybody these days, you know? <laughs> y'all know y'all know I like to joke about that. Oh yeah. Most definitely. And that's the way it should be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I mean, cause you can ask Zach. Yeah, I mean, I I deleted my video last night because you know what? I was, somebody already took something from it and made it the, you made it into something it wasn't. So I was like, you know what? I got rid of it as soon as I, you know, I heard the crap about it. I said, I don't want no people starting no trouble. And I was like, so I got rid of it. I said, like, we had a good time, and that's all I know. <laughs> Damn it. Hey, it's all in good fun, man. If you can't laugh at it. Yeah. <laughs> then now know, nobody will know about your new – now nobody will know about Daniel's nude yoga sessions. What? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, Zach. <laughs> hey, hey, you're on my show, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I still got. I can still cuss you out, boy. <laughs> well, you're too big to fight. I just have to shoot you. <laughs> oh, I tell you, I said that the other night. I was. You leaving, Bubba? Yeah, I gotta go, man. I gotta get out of here. I gotta call Linda and then try to get some sleep. <laughs> All right, partner. Well, safe travels. Stay in touch with us, especially, dude. Yeah, as soon as I get some internet, I'll probably be out here for another week and a half, and then I'll be in another area that I have better internet, so I'll be back in the swing of things really good again. So, Well, I'm we're going to start doing this again now. once a week, so you're w welcome to jump in any time, dude. Door's always that, open Zach. here. Daniel. All right. Uh, y'all have a good night. Enjoy it, and uh, y'all take care. You too, Carrie. It was great talking with you. See you later, dude. See you, man. Later, guys. All right. Have a good one. Oh yeah. man, so like, like what I was getting ready to say, I use that uh, too big to fight. I just have to shoot you line. I used that last week uh, oh, yeah. for a, a lot, a lot of a lot of people that don't know. I was in a bachelor auction here this last week for a local wildlife uh, rehab, and uh, I was supposed to take a friend of mine home. She's legally blind, so she can't drive, and <clears throat> the person that brought her lived about thirty forty miles out. Uh, away from where she uh, actually lives uh, to go and pick up my friend. Well, my friend, she just lives seven miles up the road here. And uh, I told uh, Gail, I said, I'll just take Pam home. And uh, so that way it saves you some, uh, some grief. She said, I'd like, that's, that's nice of you that thank you. Well, then here come this big old hot shot, former bouncer from Hurley's. Uh, come walking up he goes you're taking her home and i said yeah i'm, I'm taking her home and uh i'm going home then after that he goes well can i take her home i said no we already made it clear that i'm taking her home he goes well i'll fight you to take her home this guy is bigger than you daniel and wider than you <laughs> wow and this guy is a former bouncer 
and he's sitting there in my face and he goes and he says well i'll fight you to go and take her home i said Ugh, you're too big to fight i'll just have to shoot you the next thing you know one of puff bouncers come walking in big six seven guy weighs about 300 pounds ripped and i'm just sitting there looking at the guy and i and the bouncer says, is there a problem here, gentlemen? And I looked at, and I just kept looking at the guy that was trying to figure a fight me. I said, nope, he's just leaving. <laughs> Tell you what, a big guy like that, you just kick him in the kneecaps and let him drop down and get him in the nuts. And then there you go. Well, here's the run, thing. Um, and then hopefully run like here, hell. <laughs> well, here, here's the thing, though. Um, he... Uh, the guy, the guy I work with, Scott, got in a fight with this guy about thirty years ago, and the guy was still a hot shot, cocky some bitch then. Mm. And he he picked Scott up over his head, and Scott picked up a pull cue and dinged him across the dome with it. Mm -mm -mm. Wow! So I'm, I, I go and I keep talking about all this stuff. I'm going to make people scared to come to Southern Illinois. Forget the freaking monsters and shit. <laughs> Sounds like there's monsters that are working as bouncers. <laughs> I mean, this guy looked like some, this guy looked like uh, the beast from Yucca Flats. That's how scary he looked. Mm -mm. Oh. But yeah, but. Enough of that shit. Let's go and have some fun. Let's talk Bigfoot cryptids. Uh, like I said, it's been a while since we've been here doing a uh, uh, podcast here on SIMH. Um, a lot has happened since then. And, um, I mean, a lot's happened with you other than the uh, drama fiasco, which, uh, in my personal opinion, is bullshit, but we won't go into that. Um but, I mean, there's a lot been going on with the uh, conference and everything. Um, I've already gone down the spiel. You were telling me about a possible, uh, what it was, a network, a television network show? Uh, no, I don't, if it's that one there, no, I don't want to get into that right now. Uh, I can't speak about that because I don't know what the details are on that right now. Oh, um, okay. I, I wasn't the only one contacted either, so I'm not sure what's going on with that. Um, somebody else that you know that was contacted. Uh, from the same person, so I don't know. Basically, we're on standby. I don't know what's happening with that, but um, I will mention next month. Well, which is right a couple days away or a day away or so. Um, for those who know uh, Jason Lawson from Alabama, uh, Jason Lawson is coming up from Alabama, uh, and he's also uh, the producer of uh, Daxo Productions, film producer. Um, he's coming up from, um, uh, from Alabama towards the end of April and we're going to start doing some filming for, for the Bigfoot documentary called, uh, the title will be called elusive, um, searching for the, uh, unknown. So, or yeah, I think, yes, discovering the unknown or something like that. I can't forget, the, I forget the name of how exactly we titled it, but, um, so that's going to be some filming that we got going on. That'll be a Bigfoot documentary, which will be available, um, on Amazon, as far as we know, we discussed uh, we're going to do Amazon because it's the cheapest way to go going about it because it's free. <laughs> it's free to submit. Um, we'll be able to sell DVDs through Amazon. Shoot, if I had fifteen hundred dollars, I could put this. Uh, I'll put it up on, on Netflix, but <laughs> I don't have no fifteen hundred dollars for that. <laughs> so, and uh, the cool yeah. thing about that documentary, uh, I don't know how many people know the young lady, but. Um, there's a young lady from Australia. Her name's Bianca. Uh, she's going to be doing the narration through uh, throughout the documentary. Um, the whole document, the whole film is not going to be narrated, but uh, there'll be uh, you'll see feel, you know me in the field. You'll, you know there'll be interviews and stuff like that, and, and uh, it'll be real boots on the ground uh, stuff. It'll be something to look forward to. So, so but yeah, Bianca, she. Uh, if you're not sure who she is, you can find her on my Facebook page. Uh, again, she's uh, she was actually on one of Jason Lawson's uh, shows. So, um, but yeah, you can check her out. She's a she's a real sweetheart, you know. So I'm looking forward to her being a part of this too. So, um, yeah, but that's something to look forward to. It's, uh, as soon as that happens, I'll, I'll I'll share more information and updates on that. So, oh, and then 
Also, we have a group of uh, next month. We got a group coming down um, from up north, a paranormal group. That, um, I think there's gonna be eight people. I think eight or nine people will be coming down. I'll be leading an investigation, and I believe there may be some. Uh, there may be a few locals joining us as well. So that'll be a week of camping expedition, and uh, and that's gonna be filmed too. Now uh, they'll be filming and interviews during that. So we got a lot to look forward to next month. So. April's going to be a busy week. Uh, well, the weekend of April 27th and 28th is going to be a busy weekend. So, yeah. So, Sounds fingers like crossed. It. Yeah. Fingers crossed on a successful weekend event and everything. So, we'll see how that turns out. Man, um, and especially, we sounds like you and me both are going to be busy this summer, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm just trying to watch th how things go because, you know. I got my uh, my van is in the shop, and that's not going to be cheap. I'm going to have to come up with one. I'm using I'm currently using my father's vehicle, and I know he really wants it back. And my vehicle should be almost done, and I already know what the bill's going to be around. So uh, the funds to come up with that is not going to be fun. <laughs> so we'll see how that works. It out. never is. Yeah. <clears throat> so I don't know. We'll see how that works out because yeah, I need it back. By I, I'm going to need it back fairly soon because my van is going to be my transportation to get around to these events so and if that ain't available i'm gonna be screwed <laughs> so what's your um what's your schedule look like other than the conference so far i mean i know you and me are going to be down at harlan together but what else is new uh well besides that my event your event uh only other thing I really have going on, it won't be till later in September. I will be down in Kentucky again. Um, it'll be the uh, I'll, I'll be in the north part of Kentucky. Uh, I don't have the exact address, but uh, Susie Jane from Kentucky, um, she, her and her husband, they have their own Taekwondo school, and they have a tournament that's taking place there. And I'll be going down, um, and I will be uh, one of the referees at that tournament. So. So I'm looking forward to that. So, um, and it's nice. She's she already booked me a room and got a, a room booked for uh, for my stay down there, which is nice. So, and uh, I tell you what, Zach, I don't want to mention this. I'm not gonna uh, I'm not gonna say too much details. But next month, April, she's gonna be attending a, um, an event, and a certain somebody's gonna be there. She knows him. She's friends with him. She's going to talk with this person. And if she could afford to have this person at our event, because Susie Jane is going to be, uh, she's one of our sponsors. And um, she's going to be there at the event with her family. But she's going to talk to a certain person. And fingers crossed, that person, plus, I mean, if this person shows up at our event, if we could, if we get a confirmation of this person being there, there's no doubt our, our event will be packed. I'll, I'll tell you offline. I ain't going to say it here. Is this the one you talked about? A um, uh, certain uh, Mr. Uh, B? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, I didn't want to say nothing because, you know, she's going to talk to him and see what happens. So, yeah, because he has family here in Virginia, but uh, that's down in southwest mm -hmm. Virginia. So, um, Dude, that yeah, awesome. she's, yeah, she has good friends with him. She's going to, like I said, she's going to talk to him and if she could afford to swing it, she's, so I guess she'll probably cover the cost on that, but right. I don't know. I've been keeping that in the back of my mind. So, you know, I didn't want to really bring it up because like I said, there's no guarantee in it, but if it falls through, that's going to be awesome as hell. Well, so. We're going to sell out. <laughs> oh, easily. We're going to yeah. be having to put chairs yeah. out in the parking lot. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll have a tell yeah, other party than that. I... <laughs> oh hell yes. Oh, by the way, uh, let me bring this up. I priced. I looked into it and I priced a Duncan booth. Yep. I and? I priced a Duncan booth with tax and everything. It's one hundred and seventy-eight dollars total. So. Damn, that's cheap. But the one, I, unless I look into other ones, because this one here, 
I, in the description, you would have to set it up yourself and fill it up with water. I don't know if that's possible. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I mean, you could fill a, a swimming pool up uh, like I got. And it's about 15 foot across and about five foot deep. You could fill that thing up overnight. Yeah, I would have to talk to the venue, see if the, if we were to do that. Or we'd have to talk to them and see if we could you know, hook a hose up or, you know, fill to fill it up. You know, I, getting stuck, getting stuck with a big water bill. Then, mm, well, no, they're not going to charge. The, the venue doesn't charge me none. They're not charging me for none of the, um, or what do you even call it? Um, they're not charging me for electric or nothing like that. Not like the other venue did. They're, th yeah. These people, yeah, they're these are good people, and uh, they're not they're not going to screw me. I've already asked and covered all those bases, <laughs> and the lady says no. She said they've had other complaints about the other venue they've heard all about them they're like no they're just they want they want to charge everything for something you know they, they're old they got old crap you know yeah as you see you saw what we had to put up with last year i mean look at oh uh, yeah first hand look at that little uh, projector screen we had that that thing was a joke yeah yeah i know that thing i mean that thing i've i've used bigger projectors uh, doing local lectures and that. Oh, oh, I have too. You've seen the pictures of the, the library where I go. They have one. Oh, that, yeah. it, it's an electronic one. It, it, you hit the light switch and the whole screen slides down. That's um, the projector screens at the venue we're having this year. We're going to have two projector screens. There's going to be a podium nice. in the middle and we're going to have two. They're like 10 by 10 or if you know, they may be a little bit bigger, but they look about 10 by 10 or so. But yeah, we're going to have two of them. And uh, the speaker systems are going to be awesome because everybody will, will have uh, all the speakers will have a, a headset with a mouthpiece right there. That way we won't have to worry about, you know, people, the microphone holding it too far down because I had to go up behind a couple of them last year. It's like, hey, you guys speak louder. You got to put the mic up to your mouth. I know if I couldn't hear them, I know the other people couldn't hear them, you know. <laughs> so. Oh, yeah, that, that mic, you had to pretty much eat. Yeah. Well, that's not going to be an issue this year. Uh, we go. They got headsets for everybody. You know, they got four headsets. They do have two microphones, but uh, for every speaker there, there'll be enough wire. Like the uh, the Squatch Watchers, uh, they're going to have. There's four of them, I believe. Um, mm -hmm. So they'll each have a headset. So that won't be an issue. So yes, indeed. And uh, so if we need anything, any odd ends, I only have a. Um, there's a young girl that works there. She's going to be there during the whole event, the whole time. Uh, anything we need, she'll be there to help coordinate all the all, all, everything. So, yeah. So it's gonna it's it's well organized and well put together. So, yeah. Yes, indeed. So we're gonna have a good time. Yeah, I know, I know one thing. I've got a full year. June's gonna be my busiest month this year. I mean, just track and everything and i mean i'm going to be down first i'm going to be down in harlan uh with you at the harlan uh, harlan con and then i come back home and then the next week i am doing a uh a lecture uh at the carbondale metropolitan library and um a couple of the professors out there uh professors of molecular science psychology uh, prime, uh, anthropology, biology, they're all going to be coming out for this lecture. That's the one that is the one I'm really nervous about. Screw the conference that I'm hosting. I'm nervous about that. Yeah. Because I'm going to be in front of a bunch of people with PhDs and MDs and MP3s and DVDs and whatever else they come up with. <laughs> oh my man. And then, uh, then I do that lecture, and then I have one week off uh, to recuperate, get my uh, get everything uh, finalized for my presentation there in Virginia, and uh, then we're back on the road. Me and Mom's heading back out that way, and uh, I've been telling uh, people have been asking uh, around here about it, and I've been giving them the links to uh, the ticket sales and everything. Of course. They're just asking about what it's all about. And I said, well, we're having a VIP den den, uh, then a night hike. Uh, then we got the actual conference. And then uh, 
after that we got the after party and they said what are you all going to do for the after party i said well if i know if I, my prediction is correct all the women are going to sit around the pool and gossip and all the men are going to go rent a hotel room out go upstairs light the cigars break out the whiskey and play poker till sun up <laughs> Yeah, that's another thing too. The venue, um, there is a indoor swimming pool there, but uh, it's it's mainly for um, the hotel guests. If you know, for those who booked a room there, it's mainly for them. But maybe I could talk them into the working on a deal. Hey, you know, maybe allow a, a, a few a few to sign up for the pool. You know, but the, yeah, yeah, like I said, swim with the squatch. What's that? Swim squatch. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the Chaos Mountain Brewing Company. They will be there. And they had a picture at one of their last uh, their events they had at their uh, down at their uh, their place of business. Um, well, last time I went down there, they had a guy in a Chewbacca suit. But their last event they had, I seen pictures on their pa Facebook page. They had, they always rent a, a Bigfoot costume. The one they had looked like the uh Almost like the Jack Link's one. It was a good-looking Sasquatch costume. Um, mm -hmm. And I made a comment under the, one of the pictures. I said, like, that costume would be great to have at our event. And the dude replied to me, that could be arranged. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I said, like, yes, could you please do that? That would be great. You know, hey, because I, uh, I think we already had planned for another one, like the same one we had last year. But this one here would be so much better. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. Oh, man. I remember. I mean, uh, we've already got set up and everything. I'm going to have two squatches at the Southern Illinois Bigfoot Conference. One is going to be a friend of mine that works for um, Southern Illinois Healthcare. Uh, he's one of the providers for one of the clinics, and he's coming out in one. And then Black Diamond Harley Davidson are uh, sending out um, uh, Harley the Sasquatch. He's their Harley riding Bigfoot. Right. Hey, and uh, I think Nikki's getting ready to come on soon. She, uh, her last guest just left. So, okay. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, then, I mean, I was, I, I tell you how I come around getting the second Sasquatch. I did not see this coming. I was, uh, of all places, I was at a hair salon with my mom and everything and my brother. And then I get a call from, uh, the, uh, the library that we're having the conference at and i thought i had everything squared away and they called me i'm like oh god what do they want i went outside and i answered and i said hello and they said yes this uh so and so i'm looking for zach i said speaking and she said i have some great news okay well you've lifted my spirits a little bit what's the good news she goes black diamonds want to get in on the bigfoot conference what <laughs> Because I'm good friends with the owner, uh, Rodney Cadbiss of Black Diamond Harley Davidson in Marion, Illinois. Wow. And they called me and they said, uh, they said, when can you get here? I said, I can be there in, in five minutes. Because I was just on the other side of town. I come walking in. I said, I said, where's Melissa? I said, tell her uh, uh, Bigfoot boys here. And then she come walking out and I said, where's he at? Took me out back to the warehouse. Like I'm stuffed in this little box. This thing looks like movie style Sasquatch, dude. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's got it's got um, little uh, dowels in the wrists where you can uh, pull them up into the sleeves and have extended arms. It's got little Bigfoot shoes. It's got a mask. It's got a body suit. It's got a muscle suit with it. That thing is off the chain. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Man. Hey, give me a second. I'm going to go uh, grab my drink it's in, uh, in the other room. I'll be right back. Sounds good. I see Nikki oh. in the live chat. I thought Nikki was going to get on and join us live. <laughs> so, but she's on the live uh, chat. She can... Yeah, right. if she can send her email, I can get her in. All right. Well, try. Uh, she might be able to join in through the... Uh, um, she might be able to join in directly through the link. Um, I know on mine I have to send her the email, but you could try. So. All right. Yeah. Yeah, when you do the email invite, if you start typing in her name, it might pop up. 
I know that's yeah, all I have to do. Her name starts. Uh, her name will pop up because she's in my in my email system. So yeah. Bingo. So done. Done. All right. I'll be right back. Yep. Okay. Well, Nikki, there's Miss Nikki. <laughs> What's up, lady? I'm here. <laughs> Again, happy birthday to your dear daughter. Very happy birthday. Thank you very much. She had a very good time. Oh, Hold on, I need to switch to the other headset. So the way these ones will go crazy. Uh, yeah, today was just day one of celebrating my birthday. I get three days worth of celebrating this year. There's still kids here, but they're staying the night, so I'm going to go to my room. Oh, okay. So I don't have. I know to I can hear them. Anymore. Yeah, <laughs> they're they were dancing on the Wii a minute ago. <laughs> Man, a Wii? I ain't seen one of them in forever. Oh my god, we love our Wii. Uh oh. It's all fun until somebody breaks something. Uh oh. <laughs> the coasters fell, me. Yeah. No, I, I remember the last time I played on a Wii, it was on my cousin's TV, and I didn't know whenever you're playing bowling, you're supposed to put that strap around your wrist. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, and that thing know. went flying right through the flat screen. <laughs> oh no! I would be pissed off, man, if my kid did that. A three thousand dollar flat screen. Oh! Oh! I was pissed at myself. I see trouble made it on here. I did. Oh, wait, I gotta oh, get my, my dog, or otherwise she will want to come. Where is she? <laughs> Bella! Bella, where are you? Come on, girl. I, come on. Oh, so what's new with you, Miss Nikki? Come on. You want to come in? Okay, fine. You stay out with the kids. <laughs> <sighs> Bunch of kids running around like crazy. Now, wait, you had a birthday party tonight, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, we had a birthday party. That's right. Uh, was, uh, she turned 12 years old today? Yeah. Awesome. So. That's a good year. <laughs> That's back when everything doesn't hurt. Oh, it's time to take the <laughs> shoes off and just sit for a while. Yeesh. <laughs> tired. This mama's tired. So she's going to have a slumber party? she got friends staying the night? Yeah, she's got the rest. Well, two of them are going to get picked up in a couple of hours. But uh, two, okay. two are staying and two are leaving. Nice. Okay, so I got a little bit of a thing to share with you guys. This okay. here is the poster for Wild Pine Mountain lecture that I'm going to be speaking at. Oh. Whatever, that, whatever that picture is that... Avatar in the lower left-hand corner ruined the whole poster. You're an ass. <laughs> Here we go again. Two. Hey, I don't have no money today. It's all sweet tea, and then I got my 7-Eleven strawberry lemonade drink. So these 99 cents from 7-Eleven, they're real good. So it's so made with real sugar and excellent source of vitamin C. So <laughs> More sugar and sugar and sugar is what it is. <clears throat> There it goes. I did have a few Mountain Dews earlier when I went out to the woods, but so oh, explains what God. explains what gave me the energy to climb the ridge today. I haven't done that in a long time. <laughs> I need I needed that exercise. So, huh. so, so yeah, Zach, yeah. What is that? What is this, Zach? Uh, what, uh, this is uh, it's happening in Harlan County, Kentucky. Yeah. Har yeah, in Putney, Kentucky, uh, uh, Tony Filosi and Jennifer McDaniels were putting it on. And uh, I got roped into this. I just threw my hat in the ring and I said, if you need any last minute speakers, 
um, you know, uh, feel free to add me if you want. And uh, I'm glad I did because I'm getting to go and uh, work with the Ohio Night Stalkers again. They'll be, um, I'll be going on and right before they do. Nice. Now May third through the fourth. That that oh, those are good dates. Oh, it's uh also yeah. dates of the Ohio Bigfoot Conference, I believe, uh, this year. So yeah, that's this is um that's a Friday and Saturday. Yeah, I'm Pretty going good. down there. I'm right. Uh, I'm riding to Paducah, and then uh, Jennifer's coming up from uh, Harlan to pick me up and take me back down there. And uh, I've already got a cabin and everything reserved. I'm going to be staying at. And we're going to be partying and everything. And then you've got um, people from the forestry and everything. Judith Hensley right here. She will be uh, speaking uh, there. She's the author of the Appalachian Panthers book that come out. Yeah, she uh, is funny. Uh, yeah, she's got her Panther Tales 2 coming out very soon. And uh, she has. Uh, oh, it's already of- out. It's already published. Yeah, well, I know. Well, number the the first one is you talking about number two? No, second one just come out last week. Yeah, because she had she had asked me a while back. Uh, cause she had added my uh, one of my photos in it. Um, so yeah, I think the I think number two will have me in it. Um, uh, my picture. She said she's giving me credit to my uh, my cat track that I had posted a while back. But that book will not sell. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're right. It don't have my face in it, though. So. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> We're not so. talking about the calendar. We're not talking about the poses. Oh, uh, the nude squash poster <laughs> uh, the calendar. Yeah. Mm-mm. You know what? <clears throat> you guys just remind. You guys just remind me of something. What? Now, what? Several. Uh, Five it years back, ago, I could back, be. It was back here, I think, in 2012. It, was it in 2012? Yeah, where you were in there with all the big name researchers, dude. Yeah, that was uh, seven years ago. Shoot, wow. I was didn't it realize. that long ago? No, I know, that's what I'm saying. Not. It had to been a little bit newer than that. It had to be in. Um, I'll tell you what, I'll look it up real quick. 2013? 2014. I know it, it. Um, it was pretty close. It was uh, and it was uh, like a year or two after I come on the scene. And you guys ain't been able to get rid of me ever since. Mm-hmm. It was <laughs> 2000, 2015. 2015. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's about right. I knew it wasn't that long after I come on the scene that it come out. Yeah, so. Are they ever going to do another one like that? Well, I was going to actually bring that up. Uh, we're already in 2019, so it'd be best to maybe maybe something we could work on that and plan that for 2020, 2020. Yeah. Uh, that would be a good one. The calendar for 2020. Okay, so let's discuss who would be on this calendar. Me, I'll Anyone put my who, speedo on and wax my chest for this one. <laughs> well, automatically, anyone who volunteers themselves is already out. But anyway, <laughs> um, I'm gonna try we'll to think. Um. Would be good. I would oh, definitely. Uh, Bob, Bobcat Buck one says big Buck oh, would be a good one. Yeah, yeah, Buck. Um, as far as locally here, I know Tracy Arnold would be a great one. Um, now the thing is, even though there's twelve months in a year, there's some of them. I know, like on the um on the 2015, the Man of Cryptozoology uh, calendar, there was more than twelve people involved. So. And some of them, what they do, if there's like so many birthdays within that month, they'll, they'll, that's what they did. Like I know. Oh, they put the bir- birthdays on there and everything. Uh, something like that. Like for example, if I'm Mar- like I'm in March, so they probably had me. I I can't remember the sequence of it, but it was 
so many in one month they posted them images yeah. on there yeah um so like i could get so many people like like i know it's tracy like tracy's in march i'm in march you know so and then zach's in march so baltimore too is in baltimore right. too in march oh is he all wow. of you guys yeah. are we're all pisces all of us well no you guys are aries right yeah aries for life because you guys are <laughs> at the end of the month yeah my daughter is an Aries, so. So. <laughs> yeah, I think I would, I would title like 20, uh, 2020 Squatch Master Expert Natalie Stone. <laughs> uh. <laughs> the, the top notch researchers of the world. And, uh, uh, yeah, of the world. <laughs> oh, <gosh. laughs> oh, Lord. So, <laughs> um, I don't know. That that'd be a lot of fun to sit down and figure that out. Yeah, that definitely would. Because I know plenty of platforms to create and set up a, a calendar like uh -huh. that. Yeah, there's a so, bunch. Um, because the same one, if I'm not mistaken, uh, I think the same one that I use for the t-shirts, you could do. I think you could create a calendar. Um. Vistaprint, the same one I do the cards off of. They, I think they have an easy platform to do calendars off of. So you can you can pick different sizes and design calendars. So yeah, uh, Zach, the, yeah, because you got your card through Vistaprint, right? Right. Yeah, you should check them out. They, you can make all kinds of stuff off of them. Um, oh yeah, I, I saw whenever I was making the cards, I'm like, ooh, and they're very affordable. Ooh, the prices. Yeah, the prices are not bad on that stuff at all. So, um, well, we are. I was gonna go through Vista Print and um, get all of our T-shirts and our hats and our hoodies made, and then um, uh, my mom's hairdresser he does uh, shirts and hats and uh, pullovers as well, and uh, he cut us a deal five dollars a shirt. Nice. Five dollars a shirt, ten dollars a hoodie. Nice. <laughs> That's pretty they, good. He told, he told, they told us those prices. I'm like, yes! <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Hold on. Don't mind if I get silent for a second. I'm actually writing something down. Bobcat Wong says, tune in to my new show, Squatchy Lady. It's the number one <laughs> show on the East Coast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. Bobcat, I love Bobcat. Bobcat, he, he's, I mean, every time we go and we're getting too serious and everything, he's throwing that little thing there. He's always tickling the bottom of our feet with that proverbial <laughs> feather. He's helping us, you know, take our mind off the seriousness of things. Um, Bobcat, we love you, Bubba. <laughs> What's a Libra? Very mean people. You don't want to associate with them. You don't want to associate. <laughs> Why, Sorry, is that Jim. You... Jim uh... just said he's a Libra. <laughs> well, Jim is an exception. Jim's pretty nice. Jim's a good boy, but all the Libras I've met personally, those guys are meaner than shit. <laughs> 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 Lover. Oh, Jim said he's a lover. <laughs> yeah. I used to say that to you. I'm a lover, not a fighter. <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> talking about lover. Oh. Um, yeah, the little country store. I think I told you, I mentioned this to you in uh, Messenger earlier. The little country store that I uh, stop into right before I go into the woods, I stop there to get a drink, pick up a couple, you know, a pack of fish hooks. And uh, here I am. I'm walking in the store. As soon as I walk in the door, because, you know, it's one of the old stores. It's got an old wooden door. You got, you know, an old, you know, you got the old wooden door. You got to open up the door, you know. And as soon as I walk in and shut the door behind me, um, I'm hearing, good morning. I said, right, good morning. You know, I, I, here I am thinking it's the right, you know, the regular girl that works there. And then I'm walking through. I don't even look over at the cashier. You know, I'm like, I'm walking in. 
And she's like, hey. And I stop in my tracks. I turn and look to my left at her. And right away, I was like, oh, my jaw dropped. I was like, here's this girl, this girl from my past. I was like, oh, it wasn't really all that long ago. <laughs> but it, it was like, bad. I, no, it's good. She, you know, yeah, it was good. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> but let me stop. Um, I was like, wow, how are you? I was like, I didn't know you worked here. She said, this is my part-time job. I, she's like, I have a full-time job. And no. I'm, I'm walking it around the store and and I'm talking, I'm saying this and that. And she's like, I got you all flustered, didn't I? I said, <laughs> well, I said, I got memories floating through my head right now. <laughs> she said, oh, my God. I said, well, it's not a bad thing. I said, I, said, I can't help it. It's, uh, then anyway, long story short, you know, we I kept it cool, whatever. But, you know, cause she, <laughs> had, she had like a sundress on. And I just remembered. You know, looking down at the fast, I remember where that big red rose is too. <laughs> oh Lord! But anyway, Zach, that, <laughs> that was probably a little too much information. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm trying to forget <sighs> that now. Oh <laughs> uh, wait, Baltimore! Baltimore just messed with me. He's at, hey, send Wait. Baltimore the link. He's asking if we're still on. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Oh, my uh, God. Da, 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 da. They are blaring da, da. music in the other room. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Link is sent. Hopefully, you can give us some uh, updates on that little fiasco going on down there in Texas. Yeah, because he, uh, let me see. Well, I sent them a, a brief message before you send them that. And I said, yeah, we're on Zach's show. He'll send you the link. And it shows that he's active. So, hopefully, he sees yours. Because it hasn't shown that he's seen mine yet. Did you copy and paste the link and send to him? Um,. I can hold. Give me a second. Ah, uh, forget. Find it. Hold on. Oh, I'm looking on the wrong thing. Uh, 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 uh. All right, hold on. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on a minute. I think I know how to get him in here. I well, was did. able to get on through his Hangouts uh, invite. Yeah, he could come on through. The, he could come on. He just hasn't seen it yet, Zach. Oh. But I'm trying. Hey. I, I I used to have. I thought I used to have him here on my Hangouts, and I I went to go type his name in, and it just wouldn't pop up. All right, he'll be. Uh, he says, "Yeah, he'll be. Give him a five minutes." He said. So, yeah, I'm trying to get uh, one feller in here. He is uh, over paranormal uh, me. Um, he is a uh, a local <laughs> researcher here from Southern Illinois. He is actually the one um, that called my team out in February in the middle of the night on a Bigfoot call, and he was there with us. If I could get him to come on, uh, he'll probably tell you about that night. Let's see. Hold on one second here. Let me, uh... well, Baltimore ain't seen it, but Taylor has. Yeah, both of them are Ooh, missing There's the another one for the, the for the calendar. Oh what who's you that? Got? Taylor. You mean Taylor Cook or Taylor Glotner? <laughs> <laughs> Very funny. Yeah. <laughs> and, you, 
had you thinking on that one, didn't I, Nick? <laughs> hey, I'll do the calendar. Yeah, I'll strip my, my shirt off and show up in my overalls. Lautner oh, my doesn't look that good anymore. He stopped working out. <laughs> I don't know. I don't keep up with some of them. <laughs> but, oh, my God, he was a hunk. Okay, he was so hot looking in, in the... And the other, uh, what's that movie series, Twilight? Yeah. Like, oh my God, he like, yeah, he was one fluffy. Wolf. I was, I was team, I was team, <laughs> team wolf for sure. <laughs> I didn't really have a side. I watched the whole thing multiple times, and even with my daughter, we watched the whole thing. I mean, the Twilight. Thing is, I thought, that, I thought both of them were cool. Had the coolness on it. The, the werewolves, I love them because of the Indian side, the Native American thing, but. I mean, the vampires are cool too, but I just kind of wish there was a little bit more to the vampire thing. Because I mean, their vampire story was a little different than the way you, you used to le- knowing about the vampires. You know how vampires should actually be, as far as well. Well, they were living in the modern age. Well, yeah, they were. They were. Uh, which I that part I totally understood. But you know, the only thing ancient about them is when they went to the uh, I forget what it was called. The thing in yeah. over in it, yeah, Italy where they lived like back in the old style. So yeah, yeah. But, uh, All Twilight is is a story of a girl trying to choose between bestiality and necrophilia. Okay. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Look here, Christmas to it is a babe. Okay, leave her alone. <laughs> Who? She can't act. What? She can't act. Hey, I think she did good at Cinderella in uh, The Huntsman. Uh, I don't know. I'm not the only one that says she can't act. So. Oh, well. Look at her modeling picture. She's hot. <laughs> um, uh, I know one person that I ain't heard nothing from here lately. That's Richter. Usually he ha- already uh, has a, an episode of Off the Richter on already. You ain't had one this month. Mm. I talked to him the other day, but he likes to tell me his dreams, and then they get pretty bad. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, he told me his what? <laughs> <laughs> he told me the same dream. The last one he had, he said, told me the yeah. same thing. He told you. He's <laughs> the Zach. Are you familiar with that? No, last time I talked to him, it was right after he had his hernia surgery. And I was just checking on him and everything, and he said, "Why don't you come over here and make me smile?" Sent me a video saying that, and I'm like, uh, uh, "Good." Like, about, yeah. time he's, about time he's sitting on someone else. I guess I'm getting too old for him now. <laughs> hey, like you said, if you were on that side of the fence, Richter would have had you in that room. So don't go on lie, boy. So, what's you, why are you giving him that opportunity? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but now the um, dream, the dream. He said he said he had a dream and it had two people in it, and he said it wasn't good. <laughs> I'll let you guess who those two people are. <laughs> you and him. Um, what? Ew. You and him. No, no. <laughs> no. No. There's two other people. Wait, did he sit on your lap at the Ohio Bigfoot conference? No. He never no, said Daniel said on his lap. No. We we <laughs> we, uh, we hugged. That's the only thing that happened. That's the only touch that happened. We shook he hands and we hugged. You. I I gave I gave him a hug. That's it. Okay. So. He said Why? he kissed you. No, he didn't. <laughs> yeah, he did. He's saying a lot of stuff then. <laughs> he he didn't do no, he did not try to kiss no. No, no, no. That did not it's happen. Going off the so, oh. whenever we got you nominated to be on there, he wait said that, dude. Wait a minute. I got a message from him. I said, I got a, somebody new for you to add in your show. <laughs> Kiss my head. You put me on that show, that'll be the end of me. <laughs> I will not be able to come back. Richter is the Don Rickles of the Bigfoot community. Once you are roasted by him, there's no coming back from that. Yeah, see, Bobcat Wong is telling you, he's giving you a hint about the two people. He knows who I'm talking about. That the two people that were in Richter's dream, and he said it was not good. 
Do you see his uh, comment? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I yeah. See it. yeah. So, <laughs> uh, Bobcat Wong said, "Zach, sing us some uh, some mountain music." <laughs> oh God. I ain't sang in like a week. Last time I sang is whenever I was at that bachelor auction. I sang Honky Tonk, Badonka Donk, and Long Black Train. <laughs> <laughs> oh! And every time, and every time I, every time I came off stage, I'd just holler, "Who's buying me a beer?" And about four or five women would jump up. Ooh. I'm not uh -huh. kidding. I had a woman at the bar. They had because the woman that w had the uh, the Marion Singles group. They had us all sitting at the bar so that way everybody could get a look at us to bid on us. And uh, they had they had our pictures and our bio there on the table. And uh, there was an old lady about seven years old come walk, uh, walked up and sat down next to me at the bar, bought me a drink. She patted me on the leg. And she said, you know, if I was about 50 years younger, I'd be taking you home. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sitting there like, okay. <laughs> Well, how many votes did you get, Zach? I only got one bid, and that was the opening bid. I only brought 20 bucks. Well, shoot, <laughs> if, the, if the women were drinking more, you would have had more. They would have had their beer gardens on. <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, there was, there was a guy that was in there that got up there and started singing karaoke. This guy was singing that song, Just a Stroking. That guy was friggin' gone, man. There is... Three levels. There's lit, there's drunk, and then there's gone. But this guy was way gone. He brought a whole nother level to that. <laughs> and I mean, he was screaming, he was yeehawing and everything. And then he come up to me, and it turns out his daughter is someone I went to school with. Uh-oh. I bought brand new boots. He took me over to where their table was, and I'm sitting there talking to her. Next thing you know, blah, 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 and all over my brand new oh, boots. Oh, God, no. My brand new cowboy boots. Uh, I was mortified. I was sad. So I just walked outside, washed them off, went back inside, went back to dancing. Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. Hey, talk about cowboy boots. I saw some really nice looking ones. Well, they're, they had cowboy boots and the ones that were like work boots that look like cowboy boots. But um, the Southern States co-op that I went to the, the, uh, the deliver the other day, I, you know, I had, I had to wait for the people to come on and load me and I was looking around at the store while I was there, man, they had some nice looking boots in there. I forget the brand of them, but man, they're like, I think the cheapest one I saw in there was 180 bucks. I was like, nice Damn. looking boots. Yeah. <laughs> but I, see, I, got, I got, I got, I got for my birthday, my granddad got me these shoes today, the Wrangler work shoes and everything. These things are comfortable, but the I don't go outside. Uh, whenever it comes to buying cowboy boots, I always buy Justin boots. Hmm. Speaking yeah. of cowboys, we got a Texas cowboy on here, Mr. Daniel Baltimore, uh, Mr. Baltimore Gavon Jr. Hey, he made it. Yes, he made it. From what I understand, Baltimore, yeah. you've been a you've been a busy uh, guy here lately. A little bit busy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So um yeah, we had a, a strange kill with the uh strange kill with a calf that uh, I haven't seen a kill like that for a while. And um and then I've been working uh and then uh I'm I'm working with a game warden. So um and uh, we we're gonna talk about exactly what's going on. Nice. So, yeah. But you guys, uh, you guys have any clues of what what you think that might have been? Um, right now, I don't know because um, because there have been uh, big cats in the area. Uh, well, I asked the game warden first if there was any big cats in the area, and he said no. Uh, there are, um, um, and then he was saying that there uh, the coyotes out here have been getting like between forty five. Six uh, between forty-five and fifty pounds, they have actually getting pretty massive. Wow! And wow. and their yeah. and, and the populations have been pretty ma uh, pretty large. Um, and then so what we are pl uh, planning on doing, uh, possibly uh, uh, get uh, two other hunters together, and uh, and we're going to be doing some calling, and uh, we're going to see what actually comes out. Nice. And then nice. uh, I'm actually going to. Uh, I actually started stalking a little bit. 
um, uh, actually leaving uh, leaving my uh, my vehicle pretty close to a mile away, and uh, just walking into the area where we were actually hunting, uh, where I was actually hunting at, and uh, I, I saw a little stuff here and there, and uh, getting little foxes and things like that. Uh, but, um, and I, I was hoping that maybe I could see something that actually attacked this calf, but, uh, I didn't see anything uh, out of the ordinary. Yeah. yeah. The ground, uh, the ground where the calf was, uh, did it look like, I mean, was it soft enough to where if there was anything of any size or like where it could have left tracks possibly? No. Uh, I looked, uh, the thing is, again, there was actually grass growing there and, uh, I don't know if you're too familiar with Sandy Loam. We actually actually have Sandy Loam here. Um, and uh, so I was looking for the kill site because I was hoping for me to find blood. Uh, but there was actually no blood found or anything like that. It, this thing was licked clean. Uh, no meat, no nothing. The only thing left behind is a little bit of cartridge. Uh, the the skin and uh, the neck. Uh, the neck from here all the way straight up. And the and so when I went back to go check out to find the body of it the next day, uh, uh, and uh, this sticker was gone. Wow. Yeah. Man, that's crazy. Uh, I mean, yeah. wild, yeah. crazy wild. Yeah, but thing is again, uh, but thing is again, uh, uh, you know, we just don't know. Uh, again, you know, it could, uh, it, uh, it, uh, it could have been a lot of things. It, uh, yeah. it, it could have been the coyotes. It could have been. Uh, it could have been a big cat. Uh, it could have been a big cat. Um, you know. Um, you know. I. I'm not uh, taking anything out dealing with uh, with known predators here in South Texas that would that would actually would attack a cat. Right. Uh, you know, I'm. I'm. You know. I'm just leaving that open like that. Uh, but. Uh, but like again, I did find no tracks. I did find no hair. You know, it was nothing there. Uh, and then after that, the carcass being dr uh, drug off. So you know, I just don't know. That, that is, yeah, interesting. I hope you guys find something out. Uh, that that would be definitely interesting if you guys could, you know, maybe find something out. Um, um, you know, I, I was also it just popped in my head. Uh, I don't know how far the game wardens are willing to go, but they have the ability to maybe take that, uh, take the carcass and. See if they can pick up some uh, DNA off of a carcass. That right. might that that might possibly shed some light on something. You know. Correct. See the but thing I, is the thing is again there's but again uh, there's sometimes too is the uh, is the way that they go they go about it. It's that I don't think that they would uh, spend the money and time to figure out that that there's DNA on it uh, because they're going to be uh, there's going to be uh, uh, two things. That is uh, uh, basically going to attack this, and if one of them is going to be coyotes, and the other one's going to be uh, possibly a big cat. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So and um, and then and then there's actually have been they have have we have not proved it yet, but there was actually they're actually saying that there's actually red wolves in the area. So nobody have actually seen them, heard them, or anything like that uh, around the area, but. Uh, but and then after that, uh, they just have to make sure that uh, that these, um, uh, you know, in order for us to uh, say that the red wolves there, they're going to have to go to, over there and to find the tracks, find the hair, or actually find a photo of uh, one being there. Right. So that's why that that's why it's real critical when uh, when y'all have uh, when y'all take photos and everything like that. To make sure that your uh, stamps uh, are correct on your photos when uh, when you take it and your time. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah so that's uh, that's one of the most important things. So. Yeah, it's funny you say that because I actually it wasn't that long ago I had to tell a friend of mine uh, that that's something very important because you know you know if we're gonna study when these creatures or it doesn't matter like even wildlife like if I'm catching a, a like for example if I'm catching a mountain lion passing through this area. I want to know what time he's coming through there and why he's coming through there. You know, like if, um, so I'll look at the timestamp. If that's something I want to study, well, at least I'll know the time to stay out of that area because he's going to be passing through there, you know, for whatever reason, you know. Right. But, uh, so yeah, I had to tell, yeah, I was telling a buddy of mine not long ago. I was like, yeah, set, when you set your trail cameras, I said, you know, it doesn't take, it's not hard to do. Just take the time to set the date and time. And, and uh, you, your trail camera will usually, 
you know, some of not all trail cameras, some of them do tell the weather too. Well, not weather, but uh, temperature. Was, you know, I know my mine do. Mine will tell you the temperature and everything. So, um, all that to me is actually really good information to the uh, to take note of. You know, right. Um, so, yeah, make sure that your AMs and PMs are correct on it. You know, like you said, just take a little time and to figure some stuff out. Um, so, uh, you know, that's the most important thing. You know, if um, you know, uh, 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 you know the way it is, Daniel. When you're a deer hunter, uh, oh yeah, yeah. There, there are certain buck that comes out like uh, this certain time in the morning, seven o'clock, eight o'clock in the morning, and uh, you know very well that you're going to be there early, maybe like around uh, five thirty, five o'clock, five thirty. Get everything ready in position uh, until this buck passes again, like that. You can get a good shot at it. You know? Yeah, it's, it's like the same time when I the one spot where I had my trail camera stolen. <laughs> I've had my trail cameras there for, you know, I, I, I've been setting trail cameras there in that spot for like three three years in a row. And then, of course, the fourth year they got stolen. Right. But every time I started picking up a buck in the area, and sure enough, I, I saw when he comes to go, there's two different times he came and go, he comes and goes. And right. the one time we passed the through there was every time around eight o'clock in the morning. And he comes back in the evening around, you know, I think it was around seven, eight o'clock in the evening. Right. But, uh, and the thing is, I would get to that spot, get up behind my ground blind, and like clockwork, you know, one time I was out there, he shows up, and man, I'm excited. I see him coming right towards us. Right. Keep in mind, I, I have my daughter with us, and I'm ready for this opportunity because I've been doing my homework. <laughs> right. See, and uh, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be doing a lot more walking down these creeks. You know, I'm, I'm trying to, to notify a lot of more people. Uh, the rattlesnakes are really starting to uh, get up there. So I just finished getting some uh, deer, uh, deer. Uh, I mean, some uh, rattlesnake chaps, uh, you know, like I could go down these creeks and everything like that. So I, I really want to hit hard up there. Uh, and even, even as far as tracks, uh, you know, I want to study these tracks pretty hard. Um, and uh, I actually send my hair samples off uh, to Canada. And like that uh, to see uh, uh, to see what uh, to see what comes out of those hair samples. Oh, interesting. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, something I was gonna say real quick. Since you talked to me on the phone, has there been any uh, new uh, stuff arise? Any lately? Any more cattle have been lost, or any neighbor uh, neighboring herds been attacked? Nothing, Zach. I mean, it's. It, I mean, it was the strangest thing, uh, because I, I just saw that calf that e uh, that evening. Uh, it was nursing. It was doing great and everything like that. And then, Lord and behold, when I come back and check it out, it's all um, uh, skin and bones and just cartridge. And uh, so this uh, this calf was feeding. It was it was running around and uh, uh, it was in good spirit. And the, and the mama cow was just right down there. And any time when uh, when a calf like that would actually start uh, start uh, screaming for help, the rest of the herd's going to be there. And uh, so that's one thing that really threw everything off. And the area which I actually saw the little calf, uh, maybe like around 10, 20 yards, is uh, where where I actually found the body. So. So it was nothing. Uh, it was uh, like I said. For me, it was kind of kind of strange. I, I I I've been doing a lot of ranching for a very long time, but I never seen a kill like that before. Yeah. Wow. wow, Nikki, you got any questions regarding this? So she's talking to somebody else. Well, Zach, I was going to ask you a question regarding the kill, and. Uh, now, with, with everything that's going on down there with what uh, with Baltimore's got going on, I mean, uh, I, I don't know. I may have asked you this. I can't remember. But how, uh, with you guys having cattle on your property and, or, you know, knowing the surrounding areas, have you ever heard of any such, you know, I guess you call them mutilations, uh, I guess? Mm -mm. No? Ever any. There, there has never been real any kind of mutilations that I've seen. Um, you know, we don't, I mean, even if there is mutilations around, if there is, people ain't talking about them. Um, they're just going in there, just pinning it off on a, um, pinning it off on, you know, wildlife. Yeah. They, 
I'm, I still have yet to be called in on a, an animal mutilation where it's surgical looking. I mean, I've been called in on plenty of livestock killings and everything that were unusual, but whenever it comes to like to mutilation, on a... heard feedback. No, that was me. Uh, I'm on my phone. And I'm trying to get oh. share it. Yeah. <laughs> but um, no, you're good. And uh, I was, uh, I'm still. Have yet not to been able to go and investigate any kind of you know mutilations where organs are missing, uh, certain body parts. Um, I still have yet to get to do anything like that. But whenever it's like a slaughter, yeah, that's whenever they call me in. Now, uh, funny to say that about uh, cattle mutil- uh, whatever that word is that y'all use, um, and then um, like I remember as a little boy, maybe in the like in the 70s uh where there was actually cattle out here that was actually uh, mutilated so sometimes i can't say that word but mutilated and uh there was actually some uh some cattle that was actually uh killed uh where the game warden was also uh contacted and uh so um and this certain cow uh the tongue was like circ- uh like actually like somebody actually removed the tongue from this animal and I was a little kid at the time, and uh, you know, and uh, so they were actually moving around there and just looking at it to see what kind of body parts that was actually missing from the cow. And uh, so um, I was trying to listen to the conversation, but you know, what they asked me, me to, uh, to go ahead and leave. But uh, but what I remember uh, vividly was where where a certain cow's tongue was actually uh, was actually removed. Uh, but on uh, on this case here, it was nothing dealing uh, with uh, mutilation or anything like that. It was basically uh, uh, basically a kill. So. Hmm. You see, I mean, around here, I mean, I've had uh, you know cattle die from lightning strikes, uh, natural causes, disease, um, and stuff like that. Very rarely, even on the disease and the uh, the lightning. Uh, I only lost one cow in the last 10 years uh, to lightning. Um, but um, some of them, they just get real malnourished. Um, like, a uh, perfect example, about two years ago, we had uh, an epidemic up here of hoof rot. And yeah. Baltimore, you know what I'm talking about oh, when yeah. I say hoof rot. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, if we go and we vaccinate them, they still ain't getting any better. And then they just don't want to come up away from the water. They're wanting to stay in the water where it's keeping the swelling down from the infection in the foot. And they just end up dying. But there's always been a couple of them out of the herd that's turned up missing. And we always find them in this one place that I call the boneyard. And it's a place where all the cattle that we have lost, that we have not been able to explain their deaths uh, or what killed them or what caused their death, that's where they all go to die. And it's always in this one creek at the very north end of the property. And that same area, not uh, not even 150 yards away from where they're falling down dead is where I found that giant tree structure and the trackway uh, from the video I did about two or three um, months ago regarding the new alpha that I believe is in the area now. Uh, Daniel, up there in Virginia, or have you ever had to investigate any kind of like uh, animal kills, etc.? Uh, no, not that I can recall. Um, trying to think. I've never been called to, to investigate any kills. I mean, I have come across, you know, various kills and stuff. Um, what you would call it? Um, like, not recently, but I... I recall coming across different deer carcasses out in the woods. And, um, you know, there has been a couple similarities in the, in the, uh, you know, with the carcasses. Um, of course, when I say carcasses, there was actually just, you know, there, you know, some of them had very little hide left, but most of it, you, it was down to the skeleton, you know, skeleton. Um, now on the, on the skip, on the skull, on the front snout of a deer, where the, you know, 
on two out of the you know three deer kills I found. Now keep in mind they're in the same general area, I mean same forest, but in different locations. Um, two out of the three both had the front snout, like you know the, the skeleton of the snout gone. Um, as in something maybe a bit there, and you know took uh, actually took a, that part of the skull, and you know um, that's the one thing I thought was interesting. Now, what could have done that? Well, could that have been a cat, or could that have been a coyote? Now, like cat. one thing, uh, yeah, because one thing that you, uh, Baldwin, I mentioned about the coyotes, we do have them. They are that big up here because the um, there is red bulls here in Virginia. Um, I, that's proven documentation on, online, um, and it's it's believed that some of the coyotes have interbred, um, so there's a, a hybrid. And because um, a lot of these wolves, actually, some of them were re were released here. A uh, majority of them, um, it stated that they had migrated from up north and came down south. Um, so that there is what what little I know. Uh, so, but yeah. And uh, um, Nick, have you ever had any kind of uh, kills down there on your side of Texas that you've gone after? No, no, I've never done any of that stuff, so I really don't have a lot of knowledge about that, just what I've read, you know, but mm -hmm. I've, I don't really even pay attention. Well, I don't really follow those circles, you know, I'm not a cattleman, and I, I don't have a farm, so it's not really, it's not really my line. <laughs> He's city girl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She likes your mani pedis and her <laughs> long walks on the beach and her night oh. Cadillacs with the convertible top. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But uh, would like no, to I'm in a. But <laughs> <laughs> it's just I'm not a farmer, so I don't know about those things. Hmm. I just but, had uh, interest. Well, Interesting message. What was you gonna say, Baltimore? Uh, what uh, What really got me? Uh, what really? Uh, the thing is, again, is uh, for me when something like this happens, uh, it uh, sharpens my game. Um, you know, I I I I'm not saying that I'm a, a good tracker or the best tracker, or I'm not saying anything like that. Uh, but I do not like. Uh, to me, it's like something came into my backyard and uh, took something that I'm supposed to be taking care of. And to me, that's a challenge. And uh, and I want to find out what it is. And uh, so that's why, um, you know, that's why I started going down the creeks and uh, started. And uh, I'm still hearing the same sounds that I normally hear, the coyotes, uh, the bobcats, uh, 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 the birds and everything like that, the birds of prey, the owls and everything like that. And, and, and I still have not heard something that is not out of the ordinary. Uh, but I believe that there is something right now is out of the ordinary because South Texas have gotten, uh, uh, we haven't got that much of a drought for the past five years. Uh, we have actually got some excellent rainfall. Uh, the food supply has increased tremendously. Uh, the, uh, the fruit supply, uh, the berries and everything like that has excelled. Uh, and then, so it's going to be something easy for something just to come in that we just don't know anything about. And I just want trying to be uh, one step ahead of it. Now, uh, I've actually started putting a little bit, a couple more extra trail cams, but, um, staying as again, the only thing I've seen uh, a lot of deer, fox and things like that. Uh, maybe a couple of coyotes, but, uh, other than that, I, I haven't found any cats or, or anything like that. Uh, but there's going to be an opportunity where uh, something's going to cross. And I'm going to come up then and I'm going to say, there it is. And then until I find out what it is, and then I'll let y'all know what I find. Is the, you going to bag us, bag us a son of a bitch and bring him back? Uh, well, I'll tell you, I, I'll tell you like this. Uh, there, they, the gate wardens has, have not said this or anything like that. But I've heard that the Jaguars are starting to make a comeback here. And uh, that's where uh, that's where your black uh, uh, your black cats are starting to come about uh, because uh, a lot of stuff has slowly started uh, coming back in again. Uh, again, as 
as people who uh, who already saw the land pretty well and everything like that, who uh, uh, but uh, because I haven't, but what gets me is I haven't found a track that big yet. Uh, I found some big cat tracks, but it's not the kind of tracks that I'm looking for. So we, uh, that's why we have to, uh, that, that's why for me personally, it's kind of personal to me because uh, I'm starting to stay late now. Uh, I'm starting to stay la late now in the woods. Uh, my fiance Lil's going to be taking off for uh, leaving for a couple of weeks down to New York. And uh, that's going to give me a little bit more time and opportunity to spend a lot more time in the woods, staying out there uh, very early in the morning and leaving very late in the evening. So that's why uh, there's going to be times when I can't do the broadcast for y'all because I want to be out in that field and I want to try to figure out what's going on out there. You ever thought yeah, about bringing bloodhounds? Being what? Bringing in bloodhounds? No, no. Because the thing is now, because now your thing is now is you're actually starting to bring in, uh, you, uh, once you bring animals like that into with the area that you're hunting, you will never find what you're going to be hunting for. Because these dogs are basically designed and everything like that, that's a uh, trail a trail or whatever. And whatever is there, he goes, you're going to run it out and you will never see this thing again. There's sometimes, uh, you know, there's people that hunt with dogs. I don't recommend it. There's some people that run dogs to kill deer with it. I don't recommend that either, uh, because once you kill a deer that actually has been ran by a dog, the the meat tastes totally different. And uh, but the best yeah, yeah. is just hunt the old-fashioned way. Yeah, I've heard that. Because see, here in Virginia, it's it's legal to hunt, uh, run dogs for deer. Um, like where I'm from, uh, you know, in the, the state of Massachusetts, it's actually it, it's illegal to do that up there, no matter where you live in the state. So. Yeah, here in Illinois, you can't run dogs and you, you can't use bait piles. That's illegal. There was a guy uh, in Missouri that got stuck with jail time for using a 2.5 uh, uh, ton uh, bait pile. Wow. Yeah. But, I mean, I've never had to go and, uh, you know, use dogs or anything. I don't even have to go and use them. I just got to know where to set my cameras and know the right tree to sit under. Yeah. And I, I've been finding that you just got to sit underneath the uh, uh, hickory and acorn trees. See, down here, all you got to do is just look for the hot trails and uh, just stay there and you definitely get one. Down oh, yeah. here, the, yeah, d down here, the, the, bur uh, the deer down here are just like birds. There's so many of them. And if you can't get a deer or anything like that, there's something wrong with you. Uh, there's something wrong with you, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. That or you're just a bad shot, like Daniel. <laughs> no, look here, buddy. No. <laughs> I didn't even get a shot off on the deer because my daughter spooked the deer before I, it came to my crosshairs. <laughs> she had to play with her. She was playing with her hat or her hair or something. Right at the moment when I – told her when I first saw the deer coming in our direction. I said, don't move. There's a buck coming our way right now. And she probably, I don't know if she meant I knew of our series or not, but she knows how seriously I take my hunt. <laughs> and here comes, this is this is last year now, and it wasn't the same buck that I've been catching on my trail camera. It's another one. And uh, this one here was the eight-pointer with a different, you know, the, the rack wasn't as, the the one I've been getting on my trail cameras was a nice uh, six pointer with a big wide rack. The one, this one here was an eight pointer, and the rack was a little bit shorter and, and curved in more. And but he was still nice looking. And here I am. I see where he's coming. I got my gun up. I'm looking through my crosshairs. I said he's gonna appear right up, right over there by that tree. And I'm looking, staring right through my crosshairs. And I'm waiting. I said, where the heck is he? I'm thinking to myself. And all of a sudden, I hear this snort and a blow, and I blow my gun down, lean over to look at where he's at, and he's taking off. And because meanwhile, because Brianna was playing with her hair the whole time. Oh no! She, yeah, I was like, oh my goodness, I could have had a beautiful night, a beautiful deer. I mean, right there, because I mean, I've been catching tons of deer. Because right where the ground blind was, was uh, we were right on the outside edge of the. Um, of the bedding area where they go. one of the bedding area we have like there's like three sa uh, sections or patches of uh woods that i you know discovered that were uh, bedding areas and uh the deer constantly i mean i had herds of them on my trail camera literally herds of them walking into that area and coming out of that area and i've had the bucks cross right you know right through there 
And because um, the one time I was there, one of the, the scrapes on the ground that where the you know where the, the buck makes his rub, I said, yeah, because you know when a buck makes a scrape on the ground, you know he'll scrape it and it, piss it and mark his territory. You know, for those you know, I know I know you guys know this, but um, but you know when a buck comes. You know, when the day when the doe's in heat, she's gonna piss in it herself, and to let the buck know when he comes to check on her. Cause uh, you know, so I said, Dad, I said, that. when me and Dad were back there one day, I said, Dad, that buck's coming back here. He's gonna, he knows that he's gonna come in here. Cause look at this, I picked up a leaf. I said, Dad, look at this leaf. It was in a scrape. I said, this leaf's got blood on it. I said, she's definitely an estrus. <laughs> she pissed right here in his scrape. She's, he's gonna be back here. Yeah, sure enough, he was. But damn it, Brianna! <laughs> Next time, I'm tying her to the a tree at the camp. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Oh man, but, but I it's all tell good. you, I hope I, I hope they get a turkey this year. I'm preparing for spring gobbler, which is coming up in a couple weeks. So yeah. I don't know why you got to go and uh, hunt for turkey. You already are one turkey. <laughs> <laughs> and there, there, uh, there is actually a skill hunting for turkey. You have to, you know, you have to have the right call, uh, yeah. you know, patience, patience the virtue. You know, that the, I mean, I mean, just dealing. I mean, the thing is, uh, dealing with all hunters. You know, patience is the virtue. You know, oh, is oh, is yeah. it? Yeah, it's the same thing. Is you know, it's a the same thing with Bigfoot because Bigfoot is a Bigfoot is an opportunist. You know, and uh, he's one. He's an excellent hunter. You know, uh, he's an uh, he's an excellent stalker. You know, and uh, we ha we're 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 talking about a, a creature that is has outsmarted the best of us. You know, and uh, it turns and uh, and there's some times where he's going to make a mistake. You know, the only times when Bigfoot is being seen is when he's careless. And uh, so it's uh, totally up to us in order for, for, uh, to catch him right in the, the right in the right time and. You know, I tell people, hey, you only get one. You only get a few seconds in order for you to see one. If you see one, get your cameras out. So, I mean, it, it's it's a uh, you know, it's uh, it's an animal that's super smart. And uh, yeah. you know, will uh, will uh, will we ever uh, catch them on film or anything or or in a video camera, or whatever? Sure. You know, there's gonna be a time and opportunity when somebody's gonna catch them and say, hey, look, you know, you know, come up there and have a good clear shot at it with a, with a camera. You know, there's going to be an opportunity where uh, where they're going to find a uh, maybe a, a body or something like that is is it it is it, just a matter of time because our technology has uh, has increased so much. Daniel, you know, you and I and Nikki have come up there to the stage with uh, where there has actually been cassette recorders or went from a film camera down to a digital cameras. You know, right. the, and now there's a whole bunch of now we have drones now. And uh, I could just imagine what's going to be coming out in the next five to ten years. You know, yeah. Arthur, yes, sir. No, talking about the drones. Uh, one of the things that people got to keep in mind when it comes to drones, and and this is if the people are going by the laws. You know, a lot of these drones that you, um, that you, you can buy in the stores, in almost Walmart, anywhere. Um, uh, it is actually um, there's laws. Uh, in certain areas where there's no fly zones for drones um, in a lot of areas. And and the thing is, even if there is, you got to get a lot of these drones, they got to get registered. Um, yep. They're like, you know, I'm saying the serial numbers, they got to get registered and all this mess. Now, yep. now in my research area, because it's state, it's state forest, it's the well, national forest, the George Washington national forest. If I was to use a drone in there, uh, I would have to look into that, you know, so I don't, you know, because that could be illegal. So. Yeah, because uh, with my drone, I had to write the serial number underneath the underneath the drone and uh, actually have mine registered. Uh, and uh, so I, I got mine registered and everything like that, it's just in case I would find it or in an area where, where it's not supposed to be at or whatever, uh, you know, that that like that my drone is already registered. And it's a, it's a, it, it can go a certain height, and I don't know, you know, I didn't read that far. But uh, but normally what I do is uh, I I just take it out once in a while. I, I I just don't take it out all the time. Yeah, yeah, we got a drone. Um, well, we had two drones. One's one was junk. The other one we haven't even took it out to try it yet. But uh, 
I told I told Brianna, I said, I want us to take it somewhere and practice and get good with it. Because for those who have used drones in in their different video footage, you know, for, like, for example, uh, Bill Lancaster, he uses it in his documentaries. And, um, you know, he he uses it for part of the scenery throughout his video. And it, and it looks so good. Like, it's really professional with him. Uh, MK Davis has got a drone. And he, he knows how to, he must have a really good one. Because his just, you know, uh, gracefully glides up in the air, and it's so stationary. It's not a shaky footage or anything. Where every, you could see the view everywhere. It's so clear. Those are good. Ones. I, you know, I want to learn how to get good with it to do that. You know? <laughs> the so. the the group rock hounding with Bigfoot. Yeah, they are really good at their drone footage. Wow. I mean, the way he uses it and goes up and scouts the whole area they're at, and then he just brings it back down. And I mean, his audio and video quality is the best I've seen by yes. far. And see, he probably has really good, he probably has one of those, uh, you know, they probably have a, uh, a not a cheap one either. They're, they get up there in price. And the, the more you pay, the better quality one you get. I think they are more. They probably are easier to handle. Um, there's a, some well, of these cheap, cheap ones are so lightweight and flimsy, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you know. It it didn't look too big, and he did show some bloopers where the drone went right into the back of his truck. <laughs> uh, <laughs> just oh, okay. Crashed, and uh, he's like, I didn't even touch it. It just got up and moved all on its own. <laughs> yeah, I know. So I, I know the Terminator the shit's happening now. Yeah, the controls are sen some of the controls are sensitive on them too because. They have it set to where you could turn a GPS thing on where it returns on its own, and uh, which is cool. And since there's a lot of the, a lot to do with the drone that I have yet to learn and play around and figure out with. You know. I thought that was the coolest function when I heard about that because he kept saying, you know, saying what is RTS or whatever the function is. Yeah, and I was trying yeah. to figure out what does that stand for. What does that stand for? And then here comes the drone. Oh, return to home. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> RTH or whatever it was and uh, I'm like that's cool so if you start to lose it you can what push a button and it'll try to come back home yeah it's got to be within it's got to be within so much range I think I'm not sure how that works if it gets uh, I don't know how far of a range they have on some of them I'm sure your controller or your device because a lot of them they work they're supposed to work off of Wi-Fi from what I understand yep. so I mean, that's a thing. If I don't know how far the Wi-Fi works. Now, like for example, today I use my uh, my I have my camera out there today. My dual uh, my Duo 360 uh, my Jolt camera. It's a three uh, 360 degree panoramic camera, and this one here works off of Wi-Fi. It has its own built-in Wi-Fi signal. Um, so even though out in my research area, there's no phone service, no sound, nothing. But what I was impressed about is when I turned the Wi-Fi on on the device and then turned the Wi-Fi on uh, for my, my cell phone, because I have an app. It actually connected right out there. I was like, wow, that is awesome. It, it's kind of like a Bluetooth, but it worked out there where I have no service, you know, and I was able to do my video. I, I, you know, I was only, so it I was, was its own hotspot then. Exactly, which I thought was like, this is cool stuff, <laughs> you know, so. Oh, uh, uh, when the BCC came out and did that uh, that little uh, segment with me and uh, Don Blanco, man, they came out with a awesome, an awesome, uh, what do you call that, uh, drone. It was totally amazing. This sucker was massive. And the guy comes up here and uh, he just, he goes, oh, I go, this, this is pretty, man, this sucker went high up in the air and everything like that. This guy was an expert with it. And I've never seen anything high tech as uh, as the certain drone that he actually pulled out with it. It was just totally amazing. So, yeah. Hmm. Let's see. Hold on one uh, second. I tell you, I tell you, I had a real good time tonight and everything. I mean, we all we just shot the shit. We talked Bigfoot. I'm glad. I'm glad we could get Baltimore in here and everything. He could give us an update on his little uh, mission that he's on and. Um, I tell you what, um, if you guys are down for it this next week in Baltimore, uh, can make it next weekend. We'll, uh, we'll do the same thing. 
uh, next Saturday, 7 p.m. at Central Standard Time. But before we go, um, anybody got any uh, plugs, um, channels, pages, groups? Um, what's next going on with you guys? Baltimore, you're on the far end of my panel. You go first, bub. Um, what, what's kind of strange what's going on here is that uh, what uh, I want to tell uh, down, there's actually this, this little town just north of uh, north a uh, northeast of uh, of uh, Normana that they actually started having reports about Bigfoot out there. And I'm trying to figure out, you know, how this how this creature is traveling towards that way. And uh, so that's one thing that that I, I'm actually focusing on, trying to get some more stories that more towards the northeast of it, because uh, uh, I, uh, for some reason it's traveling up in the northeast and and then going all the way back and hitting down this this creek called, called the Toto Creek, and it would actually meet some medio. And uh, so that's one of the areas that, that I'm really trying to focus on. Uh, I'm trying to uh, I'm trying to get uh, uh, some other hunters out there because I know that they had a lot of experiences out there here recently. Even uh, even this deer season, I actually heard, heard a few stories that they actually saw uh, uh, Bigfoot pretty close to their uh, deer feeder, and uh, all this well, all this they said is they saw something big and black and real tall just behind uh, going behind the feeder, and uh, they were kind of upset because of. Uh, because they thought that there was other people hunting there, and they uh, they just couldn't shoot. So um, and there's a lot of a lot of little stuff going on like that here. So I'm trying to gather some more stories up there here, and trying to get a little bit more uh, more Bigfoot reports up here. I'm going to try to have another uh, meeting and a check if I could get other areas to get uh, to come to B County in order for them uh, to like that they could tell me uh, their encounters what actually happened in their little towns. So that's what I got going on so far. Nice, Dan. What's next for you, bro? Uh, bed. No. <laughs> uh, well, really, I don't have nothing really going on at the moment. Uh, I'm just playing it by ear at the moment. Uh, you know, I, I'm enjoying the weekend right now, just taking it all in, getting out in the woods when I can for the moment. Um. Right now, I'm really not trying to think of any events at the moment. I'm just trying to let my head stay clear for now. <laughs> I need I need to keep clear for the time being. So, um, but uh, yeah, I have I mean I have things in my mind. I'm just kind of well as keeping myself. But so um, you know, a few little minor projects that hopefully turn out to be big. Um, but like I said, I will remind everybody uh, be on the lookout for you know after next month. Um, that we'll be filming uh, for the a new Bigfoot documentary called Elusive, um, Seeking the Unknown, um, or I think I like I said, yeah, Seeking or Discovering the Unknown. And um, then we got a group of people coming down from up north. I'll be leading the uh, in an investigation uh, with a group of paranormal researchers who want to do some Bigfooting. Uh, they're bringing all the all their fancy gizmos and gadgets. Um, so well, we do some camping and night investigation. Um, I've been scouting out the area. I've been, I have come been coming across some tracks. Um, I am gonna start carrying plastic with me again because some of the tracks are looking quite interesting. There, I have come across some that looked um, like you're good enough to cast. You know, and, and that's the thing. Let me make mention of that. Every time I take a picture of a, a, a cast, you know, of a track, I'm always asked. Oh, did you did you cast it? Did you cast it? I said no. Most of the reason I say no is because I don't have the plastic with me. The thing is, even if I did, I don't cast just any old track. It, to me, it's got to have enough detail. It's got to show definition. It's got to show you know. It's got to be clear enough because you know. I've learned from last exp past experiences. Some of my casts, you know, they don't look pretty because I recall the, ter the, the terrain that I find them in. You know, yeah, it might look good there in person, but when you pour that plaster in there and by the time it comes up, it looks like crap. You know, I mean, I'm not, you know, a lot of people like my cast and stuff. That's fine. But I, I'm trying to, well, let's, I'm trying to step my game up. I'm trying to wait for the a better detail track on better soil. You know, that's why I'm constantly looking. And some of the places where I want to find tracks, I never find them because, you know, like some of the smooth dirt surfaces where it's soft. I said, you know, 
or sandbars around the creek beds. I said, man, these are where I want to find my tracks at. I said, these are where I should be finding my tracks at, you know. And the only thing I find around the creek beds and stuff are deer tracks, you know, and uh, occasional raccoons, and, you know. Um, yeah, and I have found, you know, squash tracks, you know, near creek beds. But um, So, yeah, I'm trying to step my game up when it comes to tracks. I'm determined the next one I cast is going to be the perfect one, and I'm I'm waiting till I find it, you know. So that's why I am trying to take my time with them. But uh, so overall, yeah, I'm sorry I'm rambling on, but I'm going to try my best, you know, and um, I'll give everybody updates and details when things happen and come about. So be on the lookout for that documentary, and and as far as the uh, the weekend camping expedition, April 27th and 28th. If you're interested in joining that camp out and that uh, that squatching weekend, uh, feel free to contact me. Um, I'm, it's an open invitation. Uh, if you want to do that, message me on Facebook or email me at ecbro98 at gmail.com. So there you go. Hey, Daniel, let me tell you one thing about tracks. Yeah. Me, uh, me personally, uh, uh, there's some lessons that I have to learn on my own. There's some lesson, lessons, lessons, uh, lessons that to learn, learn on my own when it comes to tracks. Right. There's right. some times that we cannot find the perfect track. Right. We can't. No matter, you, you, no matter what it steps on or anything like that type deal, we cannot find the perfect track. Yeah. You know, yeah. you know, there, uh, you know, there's, uh, there's people that actually found have found perfect tracks, but there's sometimes everything dealing with our, uh, with our, with our own terrain here, we cannot cast the perfect track. Right. You know, right, and then so the I tell people like this all the time. He goes, even though if it's not perfect, you know, still cast it anyway, because yeah. you just, yeah. because you just never know that you probably might. You know, it's like that Bigfoot that had those three toes on it. You know, uh, if there's not five on there. Maybe there's something wrong with it. Maybe it stepped on a trap. You know, right. you just don't know. But the thing is, again, if you find like a three uh, toed Bigfoot, maybe some other area they could find a track similar to this. They have actually found footprints where the inside of the thermal ridges of the foot uh, actually they actually uh, uh, cast it little small little tracks, and then all of a sudden the thermal ridges still remain the same on on uh, on the foot, and they have actually found uh, thermal ridges on little feet of Bigfoot compared to the ones that are now like sixteen inches or seventeen inches. But I'm just keeping some stuff away. I really shouldn't. Uh, but the thing is, again, always. That's why the thermal ridges, if there's some there, you know, do that. And there's actually found like 13, 14 inch uh, tracks were actually matched the real tiny track because that's the way that they determine the age of them. So, uh, that's uh, yeah, that's a, that's a very good information. Yeah, because, you know, real quick, uh, yeah, that made a lot of sense and, and that it's good information because, you know, like some of the tracks that some of the people have, like, you know, the ones we see from the Patterson footage and, and, you know, some of the ones other people do. I guess you could say, you know, like, look at them compared to what, you know, what some of us make. And, you know, it's like, man, I'm kind of jealous. I said, I want to find that kind of foot track to make so that well, that way it turns out that way. You know, the only perfect track I ever had was one that I made with my very own foot. And I did that on purpose for, you know, so I could have a huge, a real human track that way to make comparisons with. That's another reason why when I find bear tracks, I, I want to start collecting more bear track casts because to me, that, that's, those are other very important information because a lot of people are mistaken bear tracks for squash tracks. So, and I, you know, and also for comparison purposes. So, you know, anybody that wants to practice and pour in casts for tracks, yeah, make one and go out in the yard in the soft ground and, and step down, make a perfect track with your own foot. And, and, you know, and I did that, you know, one thing, you know, gave me a little practice for in the plaster and it gave me, you know, gave me a track of my own foot for human, you know, to compare to that way I can say, okay, well, that's not human. That's quite, you know what I mean? So, and uh, of course I got ridiculed for doing that. People thought I was doing that to do a hoax. I was like, come on. Uh, Unlike some people, I believe in science. You know, I I use it for comparison purposes, and I always made sure that I told people, yeah, this was from my own foot. I made this for comparison purposes, and you know that way, you know, blah blah blah. So, 
But that's the only perfect track I ever had. You know, I made that in, you know, I went outside with bare feet and stepped in the yard in a bare spot and it gave off a perfect imprint of my foot and I, I made a plaster track there. But I wish I still had it. I need to make another one because that one there got broke. It was too thin. Because <laughs> by imprint, my weight didn't make enough impression in the ground. The ground was somewhat solid, you know, but so. So, but I recommend anybody well, going to try that. It's it's fun to do, you know. So, mm -hmm. uh, Nikki, familiar? What's new for you, honey? Uh oh, are you talking to me? See, yeah, tr trouble. Sorry. <laughs> well, I was watching. Uh, I was watching something, and it's very interesting. Anyway, um, you can find me on Bigfoot Weekly. Facebook group. That's all. That's all. <laughs> but you need to get that made into a t-shirt. <laughs> you can find me. Bigfoot Weekly. That's well, all. Well, I you know you, I got <laughs> you can find Nikki on Bigfoot Weekly or you can hear about her or hear her mentioned on someone's Facebook Live. Anyway, or go carry on. <laughs> <laughs> right now. Hurry up. Go right now. Yeah. <laughs> but um, uh, but yeah, here I've got my schedule pulled up. Starting April twelfth, my speaking season starts. My my call, my uh, lecture season starts. Um, April twelfth at four p.m. I will be in Frank West Frankfort, Illinois, at the West Frankfort Library. May seventeenth, I'll be at uh, Crab Orchard Public Library at six p.m. Um, June fourteenth at four p.m. I'll be in Carbondale. Uh, at the Carbondale Library, July 12th at 4 p.m. I'll be at the Galatia Library. July 27th at 10 a.m. We got the Southern Illinois Bigfoot Conference hosted by yours truly and Greg Yost, Michael Cook, Willie Guthrie, and uh, uh, who's that guy, Daniel Benoit? He's supposed to be coming out there to speak. I don't know. And <laughs> and then, you, mean, uh, you mean to tell me you got a legend <laughs> lined up to speak at your event? Dude. Yeah, his, yeah, his name's Michael Cook. You heard of him? <laughs> <laughs> and then um, close Shut out up. my speaking <laughs> season to go and then to go and sp uh, close out the end of my lecture season here in Southern Illinois for the Mysteries of Southern Illinois Lecture Series, August 9th at six p.m. I'll be in in Vienna, Illinois. But then my the dates that I've got going on while I'm on the road is um, uh, May third and fourth. Um, in uh, Harlan, Kentucky, and Putney, Kentucky, uh, for the Wild Pine Mountain Lecture Series, I'll be speaking alongside Tony Pelosi and the Ohio Night Stalkers, and then uh, I'll be heading back down to uh, Harlan the first weekend in June to go and join my brother Daniel Benoit at the Harlan County Cryptid Con home by Jimmy Blanton, and um, uh, then. I'll be back on the road at the end of June, heading to Virginia for the ECBRO Virginia Bigfoot Con uh, Part Dos. And it's the biggest thing happening on the East Coast, folks. I invite you guys to come on out. Let's pack the place out. Um, all my events are free. Uh, I know uh, Wild Pine Mountain and Cryptid Con in Harlan are free. Uh, Daniel, what's the price on the tickets? They are $30 each. And I and am, it's thirty dollars. Uh, one thing I am going to mention, I, I need to post it publicly. Um, last year, last year I did children twelve and under free. I want to uh, definitely change that. Uh, basically, I, I want to do. I know some people do sixteen and under, but uh, if you're a teenager, I'm going to say you're free altogether. I'm going to say eighteen and under is free. So, yeah, because you know I want to try to I want to try to make it a little bit easier for people. Um, cause I had a group of people come by last year. They came by on second day towards the end of the day. Yeah. I didn't feel like they, you know, so they learned about the event at the last minute and they, they really wanted to get there. And then, and my doorman came up to me and said, there's a, there's a young couple here with teenage girls here. Uh, you know, I said, what do I, you know, here it is two o'clock in the evening on the second day. I said, just let them in, <laughs> you know? I, I thought there was no sense in charging them when they're coming in that late, you know? So. <laughs> Yeah, I just so. I just opened up my front door and there's a big old possum eating uh, my cat food. Oh yeah! <laughs> wow, man. Yeah, yeah, they come give yeah. me a visit once in a while. 
hey, if you cast her, cast her, uh, leave a thing out there so you can make a track and cast her, uh, their hand, their handprint. Then you'll have a juvenile Bigfoot handprint. Huh? <laughs> 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 I, got, I got to tell you something funny. Uh oh. <laughs> I, w- I did a, I did a, um, I was doing a, um, uh, I was doing a, uh, I was installing a uh, microwave. And, uh, and I noticed uh, little handprints on the refrigerator door about this little uh, of their, of their, uh, of their kids. Right. And right. it was, and, and it was no bigger than uh, that big around little handprints on it. And it was perfect. You could actually see the, the, the trouble riches of the hand and everything like that. Two little pairs of little hands like this, perfect hands. And I'm thinking, and, I, and I'm looking to myself, and uh, and then I was looking about the the cast of what what you were talking about, Daniel, and not even close. When you have a thumb that bends, when you have a thumb that bends a certain way across the hand, that basically means it's actually used for climbing. Yeah. And, uh, and then uh, I took it. Uh, I, I took the same photo. I took I took the same photo to a uh, to uh, to a scientist that's that's has been all around the world uh, looking for animal tracks and everything like that. And I looked at it, uh, I, I showed him the track and uh, the picture and everything like that. And I said, um, and I said, hey, look, what kind of track is this? And he comes up, he goes, and I looked at him and said, said possum, right? He goes, yes, exactly, it's a possum. Mm-hmm. So I went up there and took it to another friend of mine that was actually another biologist. And a these these people went to school for this right, and, right. Uh, they went up there and i said look what kind of track is this and i showed them a, a raccoon track and all these other tracks and then i showed them this other track with a little thumb on the side and he goes well that is a uh, possum track and i said okay he goes it's a pretty big possum ain't it he goes yeah that's a pretty big possum you know it's a pretty old possum yeah, and uh, yeah. especially that big and uh the thing is again dealing with the weight and everything like that so anything that totes along to the site like this is actually a possum track. So, uh, so I, well, I, I actually went through a few experts and everything like that. Well, I, I, I know the track myself, and I just didn't didn't want to. Uh, I just wanted uh, maybe it was wrong. So I said, you know what, I just, I just want to prove myself. Uh, uh, you know, somebody proved me wrong. Right, right. So, so I went up there and, and I talked to these scientists and everything like that, and uh, and, uh, and these biologists and. And everybody, everybody was agreed that it was a possum, and there's no way that it could be an. Uh, there was no way that this could have been a uh, a, uh, uh, a little bigfoot. Right. So. Yeah, because you know, like if, if like for example, I did some research online, and uh, you know, one thing I, I read, one of the things I read about possum tracks. They even tell you in the description that you know they do resemble an infant's hand. So that's that was like when I read that, I was like that's good information to know too, because they you know for an unaware or I guess you say yeah unaware slash uneducated individual who would see that, not know or be familiar with that type of wildlife, I said, well, oh that's a child's hand, you know. So in reading that in the description of you know w- about the possum handprint itself, I so said, yeah, it resembles an infant's ha- uh, handprint. And I was like, this is good information to know, you know. So, so I like and also too, Daniel, I don't mean to cut you off. And, oh no, uh, you're fine. And uh, uh, Zach, I don't mean to go into your time either. Uh, I, I'm sorry being so uh, uh, winded, uh, but you know, I, I'm I'm looking at it like this. If you if there's a creature that's like over nine feet tall, let's say for a, for a female, for being over nine feet tall, so how and then the big babies I hear them uh, human babies like eight eight to ten uh, to ten pounds, uh, you know, uh, uh, for a big baby, I've seen I heard some babies being four pounds, maybe even smaller preemies, but if you can have a, a creature that's actually like nine foot tall, or eight foot tall. And uh, and and I believe that the hum- uh, that the baby uh, to the bigfoot is going to be a little bit more bigger than a human. So that means their hand. The, if you have a little baby hand, a small little infant hand, 
and I'm going to say it's going to be probably twice the size of a human hand, a human baby's hands. Right. So, right. And, uh, and I could just imagine, uh, you know, uh, and, and the thing is here, this is what gets me and the dealing with the weight. Um, you know, uh, if you have a, if you have a, uh, uh, I guess to go back to science. If you have a Bigfoot that has a, a 13, a 13 and a half inch foot and the impression that it gives with the weight, it's going to be an indention on the ground. But if this baby uh, could actually, uh, this tractor was actually uh, uh, plastered as saying that it was a baby, uh, it would have to have been walking, walking down on, on its two legs in order for it to get weight. And, uh, right. you know, again, it, uh, you know, to me, if it was a baby infant of a, of a Bigfoot track, it shouldn't have been a little bit more bigger and a little bit more wider and a little bit possibly a little bit more longer. So. Well, here's another comparison. If, if I may add real quick to that, think about it. Do you uh, do a Google, do a Google search on infant baby chimpanzees. Their hampers. We know they have an opposable thumb, but their thumb, their hands are a little bit different than ours, but that would be another good comparison is look at the size of an infant uh, a chimpanzee. Their hands are bigger than a human baby's hands. So, but you know, then again, a lot of people like to compare chimpanzees and some of our primates to humans anyway, because they're considered, according to science, they're considered one of our closest relatives. But so, but yeah, their hand prints are pretty big too, you know, for a young infant, um, even to a toddler sized chimp, you know, so, but that's it now. That's some good information there, and a good thing for you know to keep in mind and everyone to consider as well. So, but uh, yeah, I'm sorry, Zach. I know I apologize to you for going on. So <laughs> no, no, no. I hey, I invite this kind of shit come on and go down on my show and everything. You guys got a voice too. <laughs> so you guys got something to say? Say it. I don't give a shit. That's the reason this show is called Raw and Uncensored. So, uh, <laughs> well, we're actually that. speaking educational, scientific stuff. So this is this is educational for those who, yeah, uh, don't know. Uh, right. Uh, what I'm going to do, uh, I want to talk. Uh, I'm going to try to get my uh, uh, my scientist down here, and uh, so like that, he could actually talk to you all uh, by the name of Mr. Morley. Uh, he's from San Antonio. If I could get him down to Beville and actually uh, maybe even uh, have a room for him. And like that, we could uh, go Bigfoot hunting and actually sit down there and actually talk to this man. Uh, you know, this uh, this guy has been doing uh, uh, Bigfoot research for number and uh, numbers of years, 10, 20, 10, 20 years. And there is and I cannot even hold a pedestal to this man when it comes to all the research and on all and all the places that he's gone to for Bigfoot research. He, uh, he knows he knows MK Davis real well. Uh, and then so he does a lot of research right now. He's in East Texas right now. He calls me up and he said, hey, Baldy, I'm going to be going to East Texas. If anything different happens down here, let me know. And uh, and uh, and uh, we always get in contact with each other and uh, and let us know about what's going on. But this man has a handprint of Bigfoot. He has so many different castings of Bigfoot and he ha and uh, his uh, knowledge of Bigfoot is so fascinating. He has uh, vocalizations of Bigfoot. He has he has stuff that I, I that floored me when it comes to uh, when it uh, when it comes to uh, uh, the the Jeremiah talking that the, uh, that he uh, uh, the, uh, uh, that we actually call it. This man is totally fascinating, and I'm going to try to have him uh, 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 come to the show one day. So well, that would be awesome. Yeah. yeah. Well. Well, just let you know, I don't, use, I don't use science. I, I learn from the old ways. So, the old Your dick. <laughs> I'm sorry. I had to say that. <laughs> but on that note, guys, on that laugh, um, Nikki, <laughs> Daniel, uh, Baldemar, uh, and especially uh, one, our, our guest earlier, uh, Carrie Arnold from Bigfoot Odyssey. Um, I thank every single one of you for coming on this episode of Raw and Uncensored. Um, I, I, I enjoy having you guys as my guests and everything, and I enjoy you, uh, Daniel, allowing me to come into your world on Bigfoot Zone and share my opinion. So I'm re I just do this as a return of the favor. Baldemar, thank you for coming on and giving us an up update on the uh, 
little mission that you're on. Um, Nikki, just thanks for showing up. <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, I like I, like I tell um like I told Nikki the other day, she's the one. I mean, out of I mean, out of everybody that we have on our panels and everything, I love you, Daniel Baltimore. I love you, but Nikki's my favorite because she's the one that's not afraid. To, she's not. She's the one that she's she's the one that's not afraid to go and question me at every turn. And I, I don't like uh. Ass kissers, and I don't like yes men. That's the reason I like Nikki because she'll go and question me every little thing. Zach, hold up. Look at Nikki's profile. She's sleeping. <laughs> She's worn out. Those kids got her worn out because uh, both. <laughs> you probably don't know it, but her her daughters and her fr her daughter's friends are in the other room. They, uh, her daughter just turned twelve years old, and uh, she's got a bunch of. Girls in the other room being loud and playing music. She's all worn out because they had a party, and she's got uh, her her daughter's got a slumber party tonight too. So <laughs> she the poor girl's worn out. <laughs> I'm oh, like, oh. oh, she woke up. She heard us talking about it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then then tomorrow's my birthday. I'll turn in twenty four, and uh, that'll be day two. Thank you, Baldemar. I appreciate it, Bob. But yeah, that's going to be day two of three of celebrating uh, of my birthday. So today was the first day we, uh, my family from up north, come down and we went out to eat, went shopping, and uh, it was a sad day today. Though I went and I was bent over trying on these new pair of shoes I got, and I broke the tank on my vape. Oh no! So our <laughs> So R.I.P. the tank on my sixty dollar vape. Well, I've been smoke free altogether for a, a good two years now, so or more. So but, yeah, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm surprised you didn't you didn't smoke up you in Baltimore whenever I left didn't smoke up all my cigars I left. <laughs> I, I didn't touch that. They're probably still there, huh? I didn't touch them. They're probably still there. Yeah, they're, they're sitting up right up in my cabinet, right above. Yeah, I can I can pull them out and show them to you right now. <laughs> yeah, I think I left my lighter there too. Oh, I don't know what what color is your lighter. I actually had a pack of lighters. I, I try to keep lighters on hand for when I go camping. So <laughs> blue. Oh, it might but, be one of them. I don't know. Um. Oh, but, but all in all, you just had a birthday too, didn't you? Yeah, just turned fifty three or fifty four. So fifty three. <laughs> okay. He's getting so old he can't remember how old he is, bless his heart. Is that what happens when you get 53? <laughs> I, you, you just turn the numbers around, so I'm 35. So. <laughs> there you go. Oh, that means I'm older than you then. <laughs> I just turned 39 on the 25th. So. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh. Well, uh, but, Baltimore, before you came on, the one thing we were talking about uh, doing, it's too late to do it this year, but uh, for the year 2020, uh, I think we're, we're going to try to design a uh, 2020 Bigfoot calendar. So, cool. yeah, and um, we'll go through each month, try to get, you know, so many people for each month and get their permission to add their picture in there and create a, 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 a calendar and see if we can set it up for a fundraiser, you know, some, somehow. You know, try. Yeah. So, yeah, because back in 2015, there was, a, there was one that was done for a fundraiser. It's called the Men of Cryptozoology. And, uh, yeah, I was actually surprised and honored that they asked me. I was actually featured in that one, too. But um, I, thought, I thought if we could all do one to work together, maybe uh, try to do that. I think it would do really well. Sounds so, good. yeah. Did you see Mr. Well, on that note, everybody, uh, we thank you guys for tuning in tonight. Um, on behalf of Baltimore, Daniel, Miss. Nikki and uh, Carrie Arnold, we thank you guys so much. God bless every single one of you. We love every single one of you. You guys are the reason that we do this. Um, be sure to check out uh, Bigfoot Weekly with Nikki, Bigfoot Zone and ECBRO with Daniel, and B County uh, Bigfoot Researchers with Baltimore. Um, so until then, everybody, thank everybody. Uh, we thank you all. Have a very good rest of your weekend. Uh, have a very good work weekend. We'll see you guys back here next Saturday night at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, only on the Southern Illinois Monster Hunters YouTube channel on this on this series called Raw and Uncensored. Good night, everybody. Good night.
Zach, 